Yeah, baby. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithm. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push up lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on to bigger banquets. Miss that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth A in here. Extra fruit, the brand. You can't move me, the music is man It's a con job, but this grand I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stink And yeah, it took some hard work But blind love play a huge role And they say that it don't But they're feeding you fool's gold And if I know one thing, the truth's home Even if it's a tough thing to swallow An even harder thing to hold And truly know with not a doubt while on the globe And even though that seems inherent It ain't always so apparent Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it But don't worry, it's a pretty February In a year with more to carry And more days is yet to come Under the sun taking the ferry to the city Where the moment's extra pretty Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain That isn't equal to the real world All that stress ain't saving me fear though I swear to God I'm trying But they pushing the demons down my esophagus Screaming the easy life, what I want all the ways Praise made up holidays, tell me that love is the answer Just to boost this economy But I'm more sell now, but I ain't following I ain't a hollow man, I'm full of them fall winds Take it all with a tall grin And if you feel it, do it with me And just sing with the song, say it all for what it is. It ain't all so big. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, y'all. It's me, SB. Dearly beloved. Ooh, I like that boom, y'all. I hope y'all have an a terrific Monday. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. It's me. And my co-host, BMU, he's back. It's the dynamic duo. Come on up here. Where you go? Oh, my goodness. We've been missing you, and now you disappeared. But no, guys, Black Man is going to be with me tonight. He is having a little technical difficulties, but he'll be here in just a few moments. Listen, guys, I would like to say hello to all of you that have decided to join us for the start of the show. You guys are so ah, supportive, and I love it so much. Um, tonight, we're going to have an excellent show. We're talking about can bad husbands be good fathers? Y'all, whew, this has really been getting me. This has been having me thinking. We're going to talk about it for a little bit. We're going to figure out how we got here. We're definitely going to figure it out. But hello to a few people in the comment section. I'm going to say hello while Black Man is over here doing his thing, getting ready. Let's see who we got here. Who's who's joining us tonight? Let's see. Me, of course. Corey. Hello, Corey. How you doing? It's good to see you. JG, JG, I'm fine. I'm here finally, Miss Boss, Mr. Boss, and BMU. It's good to have you. Thank you so much for your engagement. Also, in your comment, you know, you actually like to comment on the actual videos when they come out. So I appreciate you for that. Demetrius, it's good to see you. Hey, now. Hello to you, too. Dr. Steele, what's going on with you? Sherelle, I think a man can be a good father and bad husband. Ooh, ooh, wait a minute. Let me let me make sure I you said that or I said that correctly. I think a man can be a good father and bad husband. Ooh, I, I got to hear about that. Thank you, Sherelle. Sherelle said looking lovely. Thank you. Harrison Family Values. Ooh. Dope title. What you think? What you think? Can a bad can bad husbands be good fathers? We're gonna have to. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to analyze this because every time I go one way, I think my mind is all made up. Then I'd be like, oh, but who said that was that way? Who makes that right? Is this just me or is this the rule or what's going on? So yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to think think about this and kind of analyze it a little bit. And I want to hear from you guys. So once we get into it. Definitely. I want my comment section to definitely add to it. I don't know if we're going to bring up anyone tonight, but if we do, I definitely want to hear what you got to say. But Black man, you ready? 
Come on up here, sir. What's going on? Nothing much is going on. How are you doing? You no, know, I'm doing pretty good. It's much to be expected. Uh, you know, just shout out to you and Mr. Boss for all the love and kind words you had when uh, my, I lost my aunt. So, and all the other people who out there who uh, sent warm wishes and prayers and all that good stuff too. I appreciate it. Well, you know, I, um, you know, I said what I had to say to you, but I was unsure. I just said, I said, black man has some family matters. He had to take care. I didn't know what, how much I was supposed to say or how much I wasn't supposed oh, to no, say. You've been so there. Yeah, sorry. I, you know, I don't want to put nobody's business accidentally out there in the street. So listen though, you've been doing good so far since you've been oh, yeah. back home and okay. Yeah, got, back in, got back in yesterday. Um, and, uh, yeah, doing good. Everybody else is doing good too. I called and checked on my grandmother. I made sure she was doing okay. And uh, she's doing okay. She's just, you know, chilling. And so I'm glad that she's, you know, relaxing. And she got a lot of people there taking care of her, though. So, you know, so that, that's good. So, yeah, we're good to go. Good. Well, we say hello to a few people. But you know what? Harrison Family Values has a good point right here. And Harrison, it can go both ways. Because um, he's asking, um, I'll ask this. Do we ask of bad wives make good mothers or unmarried women make good mothers? Hmm. Mm. We have, I mean, you know, it goes both ways. Uh, the reason why we um, were on bad husbands is because uh, it was a thought from myself. It was, this is more of like a, that particular thought was coming from a personal place. Um, you know, I always analyze myself first and I bring you all what my thoughts are. So that's why we used husbands. This is, this is no, you know, this is no shade towards any man. I happen to think men in their rightful position are good. I hope women could understand that and make sure we can uh, get you all back to your rightful positions and y'all can be the head of the households, the leaders and all the things y'all need to be so we can just have these nuclear families, continue to have productive children. Because right now what we're going through is not too good. It ain't looking good, black man. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I'm, I'm I'm advocating for the man and the woman to be together and have this nuclear family so we can raise good children and continue this generations for generations. So that's that's what my goal is. But black man, mm -hmm. you got anything you want to share um, about, you know, around the world or anything you've heard lately that you would like to share with us today while before we get into this? Security boss, I sent you the video. I was getting ready. To, <laughs> I was getting ready to ask which one. <laughs> That, that, of, of the young lady that says, when is it okay to tell my man I want to sleep with his cousin? Or when is it okay for me to tell my man that I want three men to pound me out? Right. Him and two other men to pound me out. Right. Um, when is it okay to have that conversation? Okay, so what's your what's your question about that conversation? What, what it, as a woman, security boss, if you mm -hmm. were sitting on that panel or in the front row of that audience and they gave you a microphone to respond to this young lady uh, that's on the panel, what would you have said? I would have said to that young lady, I can't even believe you're entertaining something like that. But I, I think what they were doing was the moral of the story was, is that women say that men want them to be vulnerable and uh, come to them with all their you know, vulnerability, their questions, their concerns. They want them to be honest. Um, Cause the, the next part of that, I know you watched it was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how does the man respond? You know, can he or will he ever get over that? Or will he always revert to, is she sleeping with somebody? Is she thinking about sleeping with somebody? You know, the difference between a man and a woman is actually what it is. And she should know and have more respect for her man than that. So I kind of think it was a, I got your moment. Let me see what you think about this. Right. But I would definitely say to a young woman that would say anything like that, but it go, let me, no, let me, let me finish this thought first. I would say to that young woman, uh, why are you even entertaining those type of thoughts? That's, that's just not healthy. But, no. but like, man, let me share something with you that I've noticed. Um, I've been new it, um, but me and myself, my honest self with myself. I'm being honest with myself. You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've been came to the conclusions that your marriage, your eyes, the things you, uh, the influences you have around you, all those things, you cannot allow any type of threat per se. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you, you have to, you have to guard your heart. You have to guard your eyes. You have to guard what you hear, the people you are around and all of that. Now, me being a woman, I'm honest with myself, and I can say that because right. I'm in my 50s, right? Right. But I still think I got it going on. You know what I mean? Come so on now. When I go out, I'm, I would be a fool 
to think that ain't no man looking at me. Mm -hmm. I'd be a fool to think that. And I also would be a fool to pretend that men don't spell good or men don't look good or men ain't carrying themselves. You know, I would be a fool right. to pretend. But see, see, this is what's happening. It, these Our women, our women, and it's just it's not modern women. They've been fooling and kidding themselves for a very long time. They be joking around like, you know, it's so funny because on one side, they're so, oh, my God, I wouldn't dare. Oh, my I, I'm married. I wouldn't dare look at another man. Oh, any man can come to my. Why? What? What difference would it make if I went on a girl trip? I'm married. Okay, they mm -hmm. play. That, they play that game right there. On one hand, they play that game. Yes. Then on the other hand, they'll drop it like it's hot. They'll be entertaining and joking around with men about their penis sizes mm. and things like that. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm real confused about this because I'm not sure what you all are doing. What y'all doing right now? See, they play, they're playing these games like they they won't be entertained, like like they're so strong and and their, their flesh can't get to them and make them want another man. If even if this man is enticing them, you know, like they'd be like, I'm I don't want you, but I'm going to sit there and play with them every day. You right. know, well, I'm, I'm going to ride in the car to lunch with them every day. Uh, We're going to be talking about what his wife is doing wrong every day. Why are we playing these games, black man? See, I'm I'm grown enough to say, look, all this is tempting. This ain't nothing but sinful sin at work. You don't see mm -hmm. how you let a little bit in, some more come in. Yep. So you're not supposed to entertain those type of things. And I try to tell my ladies this all the time. That's why I say no girls trips with single females. You remember I said that a long time ago? Mm -hmm. And you, you remember how they responded? It must be something going on with you. They went straight to cheating. I'm not talking about cheating. I'm just right. saying we think different. What you, you all as single women think is different. What I think as a married woman is different. So, and we don't think the same. So I'm not going to bother you, but I've been hearing on these platforms where women just think they can, they can say all types of things that they think that men will be enticed by. Yeah. And then somewhere along the line, they think the man going to forget it. Or they think some man's going to forget it, but I promise you, they're not going to forget it. Right. Uh, That's uh, Ahead, yeah, I, 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 I always say security boss, and I'm going to keep saying it. People have this uh, saying that if you get more money or you become a millionaire, it makes you more of what you already are. For, for promiscuous women who get married. And when they get married, if they didn't go and get therapy and and get past um, being hurt, broken, uh, sexually liberated, uh, all these other things that women do, just sexual, just sexual nature, just wow. If these women don't go get, go get any type of mental help or anything to help them through the journey of being healed from that lifestyle, when they get married, marriage is only suppressing the woman that they are because they're not, they haven't received any help. So when these women want to go on girls' trips, security boss. What they're really saying is, I need to go to an island. I need to go to the Caribbean. I need to go to anywhere I can with my friends to feel whole again. Because what happens is when you don't get that help, you go back to what makes you feel comfortable. So if you like penis, you'll go seek out penis. You'll cheat on your husband. If you like being around a lot of men and getting a lot of men's attention, you'll go on girls trips to feel that attention on you again. You'll start submitting yourself to the things that you're not healed from. So your marriage is only suppressing you. And then what happens is when that suppression happens, the husband will say, you know what? I don't think you should go on a girl trip. And then what happens then? She builds this other thing in her marriage that can start pushing toward her marriage, which she'll tell her husband, you're insecure and you're controlling. Why are you? You're insecure. Why I can't go with my friends? You're controlling, telling me I can't go with my friends. That's what it is. You're so, there, she's only suppressing herself from what she truly is because she didn't heal from her being sexually liberated. I, I, I think that may have a little bit to do with it, black man, but I do think there's a large part of it thinking that we can't be enticed. I think for the longest women are, you know, what's the little thing? Flowers and all things sweet. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we think that we can really be enticed. I really think we feel as though we have total control over everything that we do. And and then if you want to say that, okay, I'll agree with that too. 
but that would go lend more to your point as far as being liberated. I just like to guard my situation. I guard my heart, my eyes, my mind, my influences. Because uh, have you ever been around somebody they cussed all day and by the end of the day you was cussing? Mm -hmm. You become what you're around. That's biblical. Yeah, of course. It all is. So that's what I'm saying. Just, just that mm -hmm. simple. So I'm just telling ladies, let's be a little, let me say it differently. Don't allow anything to supersede your marriage. Exactly. And, and, and security balls, 30 seconds here. I'm going to add this little part in there. You remember a while back, I told you about the girl that I went to school with and she went on a girl's trip, right? She got engaged and went on a girl's mm -hmm. trip to celebrate mm -hmm. and she ended up getting pregnant on a one night stand. Right. You did. She had to me. come back and tell the man. She had to come back and tell her fiance, I got drunk. I was out of line. I let another man raw dog me. And now I'm pregnant. And not only with one baby, she was pregnant with twin girls. Now you bring in two girls into the world who don't even will never know who their father is because you have sex with a person. You don't even remember who the guy is. So now you got two girls. This man accepted the fact that she cheated. <laughs> this one. I don't want to call this man a beta, but I'm, I'm not I'm not going to do it. But he accepted the fact that she was pregnant by another man. He forgave her. And they're married to this day. Those girls are 13, 14 years old. They're still married to this day. And, and they had another little boy. That's you know, you, you told me about that. I was trying to recall that. I couldn't remember if it was somebody that you was close to you or what. But, you know. It's it's just interesting. I just think that we need to grow up a little bit. I think that's immature thought because um, it's a real thing. Men, if you still got your stuff together, men are going to still see you as a woman. Even even when I say things like don't allow any single men, don't allow men to come to your house when your husband's not there. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about that. These are just things I put in place because I, I don't want um, I don't want to wake up one one and looking stupid. What, you know, what, what, I'm, I'm too old for that. You know what, what I mean? Like well, security boss, let me tell you something. There are um, a couple of weeks back before all this tragedy happened in my family, there are two young ladies who uh, I work with who I don't be in their business, but I listen to all of it. And uh, they went on a, on a girl's trip together. One's married, one is not. They went to go get their vaginas tightened up. Now watch this. Um, they plan to go get that done. Um because they, I guess they didn't want to be loose anymore. I, I don't know why. I can't think of any other reason why you would want to go and get that done, that procedure done. Uh, but they were going to get waxed and get that thing closed back up a little bit. Um, oh. Security boss, when I tell you they're spending all this money to do that, and when I tell you that their their tires are on flat, uh, they need uh, they they need certain things. They don't have lunch money because they're saving their money up to go get a waxing in their. And the one lady with the husband, he's a he's a son husband. You could tell he was raised by a single mom because she said, "Oh, he gonna drive us down there." I I I I don't know security about. Maybe you can help me understand. Um, there's no way my wife can come and tell me. Baby, I'm going to get my vagina reconstructed and I want you to drive me and my friend down to get it done. Well, that could be a good thing, though, but not me and my friend. That would just be a conversation with me and my husband, you and, hey. you and your wife. Let's say hello to Trigger. Trigger, thank you for, for being What's here up, in G? your $10 super chat. Show your support for these great content creators. Thank you, Trigger. What's so up, Trigger? listen, um, I could see why women would do that. If a woman is married or has been married and it, she's a divorced or whatever, and she's moving on with her life, going to a new endeavor, I could see a woman wanting to do something like that. But just to, to be going out with your girlfriends, no, that's kind of tacky. And and discussing it at the job so freely, like for you to know it's some random, I'm calling you random, some random man can just hear about it. I wouldn't, that wouldn't, that's not in good taste. Right. Yeah. The thing is, if you, even if you're moving on with your life, Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm going to say this, kid, boss, before I drop the hammer on that one. I saw a video. I know you probably saw it too, Mr. Boss, be on the videos like me. But I saw a guy who went, came and met a woman with a, he had a ski mask on. And he said to the woman, the woman said, why do you have a ski mask on? He said, well, if you covering your face with all that makeup, I'm going to cover my face with the oh. ski mask. Oh, Lord. She, this was before the date. She said. And everybody bust out laughing at her. Like the whole room just fell out, right? 
I think it's the same thing with vaginal re, uh, regeneration. Uh, what do you call it? Rejuvenation. I, I think know. that you've been loose for 20 years. You want to go tighten that thing up. I think that's deceiving someone. I think if you, that man get in there, be like, oh, yes, he ain't been with a lot. That's deceiving. Oh, 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 you talking about, okay, I got you that. Well, yeah, I guess it could be. I was, I'm talking, I was speaking of a married woman. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Okay. You know, a single woman, yeah, that would be. I don't even know why you would. Okay, I got you. I'm, mm-hmm. talk about, I'm not talking about that no more. But let me tell you this quick story and then we're going to move on. And y'all, thank you guys for coming into the live. Make sure you're giving us the thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. I am SB Live and we have here Black Man Unfiltered. Make sure you subscribe to the channels. And also, I want to give a shout out. We are tonight, we are streaming on Rumble. So if you hear from Rumble and it's your first time being here, I think this is our <laughs> this is the boss in his darn time. And this is our first time streaming to Rumble. But if you're here and this is your first time being here, make sure you give us the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channels, make sure you do so. But listen, Black Man, I heard this story and this was tragic because it's kind of going on to what we said. Mm-hmm. And I'm going I'm to get to that. I'm going to get right into it. But a young man was telling this story. Not a young man. He had to probably be about 40, 40 ish or maybe 50. Uh, he told a story about how uh, his daughter was doing a, um, what do you call it? That D- DNA, when you take your DNA and you do the tree and they you send it off and they find yeah. out where you, what's it called? DNA and me or whatever. Ancestry, doc- yeah, all, this, all yeah. of that. So she was doing it at school. So she had it done and it came back that her dad wasn't her dad, right? And he thought, you know, it must be a joke or whatever. So he didn't tell anybody. He told his daughter not to tell anybody. So they went back and had it redone. But anyway, he ended up testing all three, the next three of his kids. He had four kids by his wife, he, the, the next two, and they too were not his kids. So he said, but he had signed a birth certificate. He said him and his wife were in a good marriage. He said she was a good wife to him as far as she knew. She cooked, she cleaned. She was everything to him. She took care of the kids. He had no issues with her. He had no idea that those kids was not his. Then it was a fourth child. He said he didn't even bother to do the fourth child because um, he just knew that it wasn't. Eventually, I think he they did have it done. But anyway, he approached her and said, why didn't you not tell me that these kids were not my kids? And um, he, she said it only happened one time. And he did. She at this time didn't know that he had done the other three kids other two. Uh, he said, no, none of these kids are mine. But to make a long story short, I'm going to tell y'all, long, long story short, um, this man had four kids by this woman. None of those kids were his children, and she ended up deleting herself. Yeah, she did. So I'm not trying to wake up looking stupid. You have to protect yourself. You can't play these games. She continued to play. I don't know why. He said he didn't know why. He said he did not want that to happen to his wife. He knew that they couldn't be, t- could not be together anymore. But what they, he he loved her, but he wasn't gonna be with her no more because he just couldn't believe all. He said his children were his children, but they really wouldn't, and they were four different men. It wasn't the same men. <laughs> so he what, has what no I- idea. He has no idea which way to go. So he said he's not. He's just gonna do what he got to do. What? Okay. What did I just say a few minutes ago? I'm prophetic <laughs> today. I feel prophetic. You suppressed who you are. You married mm-hmm. this man. You went mm-hmm. out and let four men raw dog you, skeet up in you, and you went right back home and put that same vagina on your husband. You're yep. disgusting. It's a, it's That's out right you now. Are. You'll probably see it on TikTok if you haven't seen it yet. Haven't came yeah, up. That you're you're a disgusting woman. And and you know what? Security boss, he got so serious for her. See, this is why I say women don't hold women accountable. And I know you do, security boss, but I'm just saying. But somebody, she got so to the point where she didn't want to deal with the consequences of her actions. She said, I would rather delete myself than deal with the consequences of my actions. She did. Now, this is the thing. She's gone. We can't ask. He can't even ask because when she was confronted, it all, you know, fell apart. But do you think she knew? Or do you think that she just knew that those kids were not his? Oh, yeah. She knew. Oh, you think she knew? Oh, wow. Yeah, because the man had to ejaculate in this woman. No, no, she no. Was- I understand that. But I'm just thinking that. No, no, don't get me wrong. I know that she knew that she was having an affair on her husband, but she was probably also having sex with her husband, too. And man. you know how sometimes you can play your mind. You could trick your brain to believe anything. You know that, don't you? Oh, my God. So she might have been tricking her brain to believe that all these children were her husband's. And because when he confronted her, she was like, Still not ready to confess. She said, I messed up one time, not knowing that he knew about 
the other two and then later found out found out about the third one so it's four four kids that he so right now he didn't have any kids that are biologically his and what is he plan to and what does he plan to do with these children He's keeping these kids. He, those kids have been his from the beginning. He said, he said, I'm glad I got my kids. He he knew nothing different. He knew nothing. He knew nothing. He wouldn't have never known if that little girl didn't have that classroom assignment. He would have never known. That's God trying to show him. That's I it. Mean, I mean, it's, it's a terrible situation, but he, you don't, he can't even walk it out now. How old are the children? Ooh. I think they said, I think he said it happened over the last 10 years. So I think the oldest one might've been 10. <laughs> I, I don't know, black man. I'm gonna have to go back and see, can man. I find it? It was, it was touching because it was like, no, you didn't just say that, you know? So it was a big deal. It's a big deal. It's, it's horrible. But anyway, um, one more and we're going to go. I, I also just saw a story and this is another terrible one where a young lady was uh, shoplifting in Dillard's. Mm -hmm. And the car, her four-year-old and two-year-old was in a car and the car caught on fire. Car was burning up. Four-year-old was able to get out the car and somebody helped him out. She was in that shoplifting at the same time. Come to find out the car that they were in was stolen. And um, the kids are in the hospital. They they got out okay, but they did get some burns. Car, car burnt up like, I mean, when you see it, it's just awful. But this is just... It's just a sad situation. Sad. To get about, again, when we have these conversations and we talk about these things, it's always y'all bashing women. Oh no, to these are about, real stories. If I'm a trash, if I'm a trash man, I can get on the panel and men will say you trash, and we just have to suck that up because men realize real quick. Yeah, you know, I wasn't the best daddy. But when we talk about when we talk about have these conversations about women's behavior, it's bashing, it's dragging women. You hate black women. You 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 you're homosexual, right? I, I, it, it's sad. And 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 these is the, and these stories right here are the reasons why men are so upset. Can you imagine being a loving husband, and your daughter goes to school, and you find out by a uh, a coincidence? No. I can't, I can't, I can't, it's none of it. I can't, none of it. I can't even get work my way through the car being stolen and caught catching on fire and a four-year-old and two-year-old are caught in the backseat of a car and I'm in there shoplifting. I can't work my way through it. It's all, all like a, like some sort of dream. Like it just can't be real. It just, just seems off way off and just something that some, I mean, it's like the, we have no decency. Our decency has walked away. Yep. I should say ran away, but anyway, it's gone. But anyway, let's, let's get to this. Um, can bad husbands be good fathers? The reason why I'm asking this question and you know, we ain't doing no bashing tonight, y'all. But what we're doing is I asked this question because everyone here that's been following me for a while knows that, um, my mom passed away. It's been over a year now. And I told you guys that when she passed away, my dad confided in me that he had six kids by one woman during the time he and my mother were married and she's gone. So I can't ask her if she knew I couldn't ask all these questions or whatever, but I have a, I have one sister that is very unforgiving when it comes to my dad, when it comes to this. And I, I have my brother who uh, I think he's just, he's just taking it in stride or what have you. And then I have me and I'm kind of like, ah, you know, I don't know. I, I had a young man one day challenge me. He's like, cause he said, um, um, when you, when you, are you, have you embraced, basically he said, have you embraced your brothers and sisters? And I'm thinking, what, what, what do you mean? I don't know them. I don't know these people. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to be, you know, like how, how do, what do you, you know, how, and I can't change my dad. I don't even know if I'm holding him responsible. I mean, I am, but it's like, wow, because what I remember of him as a child, I told y'all this, he was always my coach in softball. I bled breaks with him. He got me go-karts. You know, he was the car enthusiast per se guy, young, you know, and I was there with him. So I like cars too. And, you know, he kind of drove me to cars. He wasn't an enthusiast like, like I am, like buy different cars, but he liked to work on cars and, and engines and things of like that. He was a, he's the guy that could fix things. 
So I was always there. It was interesting to me. So I kind of had somewhat of a relationship with him, but I've told y'all several times at about 13, he kind of gave me over to my mom. So I, I guess I'm, I'm becoming that little girl, that lady now. I'm not the little tomboy anymore. So, you know, go with your mom. It's time to learn how to cook, clean, all that stuff. So I took it like that. So the things of relationship, as far as husband go, I wasn't front and center on that. I didn't know all about it. I, I don't even know if I would be able to understand it, you know, as far as infidelity, you know, whatever you're doing, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So my thoughts, so it's easier for me to embrace where we are now because I don't, I don't really, I have other thoughts of them that were pretty darn good. Okay. That were, that were good for me. But then there was a time when he wasn't there, but Hey, like I say all the time, Back when I was a child, it was mostly for the fathers to have provision. And that's what they did. Mm -hmm. um, and we never needed for anything. My mom never needed for anything. None of us. I mean, they, they took care of us. So I can't complain about that. And even now he made some good um, choices. He retired at 50. So I'm just like, OK, you know, can you be? And if I were to ask him, I, matter of fact, he even told me, I bet you, I bet my uh, mama, what she called my mama, he called her mama, too. Mm -hmm. I bet mama would say I was a good husband. I was like, oh, really? OK. So that brought me to this question. Can you be a bad husband? Because some would say having six kids inside of a relationship, a marriage relationship with your wife would definitely classify you as a bad husband. But here I am thinking like, what kind of dad was he? Was he a bad father? You know, you know, was he just, you know, out of touch or, or you know, disconnected? Or what, you know, is it just me? Because like I said, my sister, she has a problem. You know, she wants more from him, you know. And I'm just like, I don't know what to expect, you know. So that kind of brought me there. But then as I as me and Mr. Boss went through it and it was like, okay, well, we gotta, we gotta go back and analyze this because to be a good husband, we're talking about the husband, the leader, you know, the head of the house, the example. We're talking about that man. We're talking about that kingdom man that we always talk about. Right. That's what we're talking about. And we, we probably need to go over those things. You know, you know, you know, we're talking about marriage. We're talking about Ephesians. We're talking about, you know, our marriage being examples, you know, and all of that. Because you got to figure out what is a good husband. We have to ask ourselves, what is a good husband? Then you got to turn around and say, well, what is a good father? <laughs> you know? And then it was it was another thing that happened. It was that story I told um, you wouldn't hear black man, but I think it was on Friday. I watched a movie called um, The Sun and on The Sun, it was a, a nuclear family and it had one son and the son and dad, as long as they were a nuclear family, they they, they were like tight, really yeah, tight. Jack, this is with Hugh Jackman. Right? Yeah, you saw yeah. it. Oh, yeah, that's my a good God. movie. Great movie, yeah. guys. It's on Netflix. Go watch it. Oh my God. See, I knew you was my co-host. Nobody saw it at the time when I mentioned it last mm -hmm. week, but so you know what I'm talking about. You remember how right. good, okay. It was you, when they were together. Great. When they, woo, it just took okay. a toll on him. It right. But guess what? They didn't tell us that Hugh was a bad guy. They didn't right. say he cheated. They didn't say anything, but we knew that the marriage broke down and he got another wife. Mm -hmm. And we also knew that the son he never sat down that we know of and talked to anybody and told him what he was feeling. He just asked questions. He was like, so when did you meet my dad? You know, or, or you know, he just asked questions here and there, but I never saw them sit down and actually have right. a conversation with yeah, him. They left, they left a lot of holes in the story. A lot sure. of them. A lot so, of holes. Yeah. Right. Right. But even then though, Hugh showed up and was like, come with me. You coming mm -hmm. to live with me. You having some issues. Let's talk about it. And he faked his dad out the whole time, too. Yep. And we know how to end it very tragic. So yep. even watching this, I would say to myself, God, he's being an outstanding husband <laughs> and a good father. And it still didn't work. Yep. So that's why we're here now. When we put the post out today that um, somebody put out there, and we do know that spending time with your children is, is a big, a huge part of being um, with them. I mean, you know, being a good parent and uh, Sierra, she actually emailed me or DM me and told me that on average, we only spend about 35 minutes a day with our kids. Mm -hmm. 35 minutes a day. Yeah. 
So it's just all making me go back to this nuclear family and, and where are we and how can we get it back and uh, how important it is to be a good husband or to be a good father and where are we? And I needed a man to discuss this with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so black man, you are the man today. So what do you think, black man? Um, this also, you brought up The Sun, which is a, a awesome movie. Um, if you like those type of movies, um, melodramatic type movies. Um, also a movie that we can consider in this argument in the courtroom today uh, would be Fences. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Denzel. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, when mm -hmm. Denzel told, her, told his wife, yes, I got a baby by another woman. Yes, I'm cheating with her on another side of town. You know why? Because here, I gotta be structured and I gotta be tough and I, I can't be emotional. Over there, I can laugh. I can relax. I can I can I can do things I, that I can't do here. You guys, I, there's so much pressure on me here. Mm. But I go over there to her, and I can laugh and have a good time. She makes me feel young again. She makes me feel like I can thrive. So he was being a father to the baby he had with her, and he was being a father to the to the children he had with with his wife. Viola, right. Wow. So listen, uh, we're going to bring Ricky up here, but before we get started, we're going to, we're going we're gonna to make everybody smile with this video we got. Cause uh, we want to hear from Miss Oprah before we actually get into this. I, uh -oh. I, I guess we have a baseline of somewhat, well, however you want to take this and Ricky, I want you to add to it, but we're going to put this, we're going to show this video first. Cause I think people need to hear this. So let's All go right. ahead and play it. Mr. Winfrey. Large study from the Center for Disease Control, which debunked many of the myths surrounding black fathers. It found that the majority of black fathers live with their children. Black fathers are more likely to help their children with their homework, prepare meals, bathe and dress their children compared to fathers of other races. So the absent or deadbeat black father myth that many in America believe is really more like a lie. March study from the Center for Disease Control, which debunked many of the myths surrounding black fathers. It found that the majority of black fathers live with their children. Black fathers are more likely to help their children with their homework, prepare meals, bathe and dress their children compared to fathers of other races. So the absent or deadbeat black father myth that many in America believe is really more like a lie. March study from the Center for Disease Control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. I got argued down about that comment. I said that months ago on my show. I got this in the proof is in the pudding. I said that black. I said by the seat because I was talking about the uh, documentary that Beyonce's mom did that mm -hmm. the that the women had taken down. Right. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it was about black men. And it showed it debunked everything that they said about black men from the from the point of them being dead be dads, from the point of them being in the jail system, from them graduating from college. I mean, it debunked every myth about black men and black women signed a petition and they took it down. And you can't find it nowhere now. Wow. <laughs> So that brings us to where we are. And I want to get Ricky's start before we, thoughts before we move on. Go ahead, Ricky. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How y'all doing? Happy Monday. What's I going know. On, my it's a good one. Another weekend in the books. Um, we, Like I said, we always believe the lies that keep us back. Mm -hmm. We always believe the lies that will take us to the next level or take us out of the, the worst case scenarios. Um. Like I told y'all, I came from nothing, right? I came from nothing. I I didn't have no role models, nothing like that, but I knew what I didn't want to be. Mm -hmm. And all I did was go to work and take care of my wife and my kids. That's all I did. Football, basketball, hockey, uh, gymnastics, homework, uh, AAU, right? It's It's... I don't, I, I, I just, the, in, in the answer to the question, to answer the question, um, black, black fathers, can you be a, a bad husband and a good father? Yes. But black men, we aren't judged that way. Mm -mm. We're held, we hold, the truth is we're, we're, we're held to a different standard than every other man on the planet. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because the truth is, yo, you, you could be a bad wife, but your kids gonna still love you like mama, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. But it ain't the same for daddies. No, daddies, you got to be everything. You got to be a good husband to your wife to be considered a good man. You got to be a good father to your kids to be considered a good man. Right. You got to be a man of the community. Right. Giving back to the people that's less fortunate than you and growing. You got to have a certain network to be a good man. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I said, we, we just we judge unfairly. And it's crazy to me that nobody sees this but us. <laughs> You know what? Uh, you know what, Rick? You'll see the holiday coming up. I was going to uh, say Father's Day is coming up. Yeah, the the holiday is ranked number twenty. That Columbus Day and Halloween comes before Father's Day. And 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 then when we talk about it, it's <laughs> <laughs> this was crazy, right? When we talk about it, you know, we get comments like, "I remember, I want to go back to when men just provided and shut up." Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you talking tonight? Oof. Right? Mm -hmm. Why y'all complaining? Uh, my granddaddy, he didn't complain. He did. What you want a cookie? That's what. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, B BMU. That's what you supposed to, to do. do. Yeah, yeah. And you know but, what, uh, Rick? You gotta be. I'm telling you, man. You have to be literally in the eyes of a black woman. You literally have to get all things right as a father, all things right as a husband to be considered a good man. You can't make, you have room for mistakes. You cannot make one. We, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about this because, <laughs> um, no, no, I, I'm, I'm grinning. Cause I'm, I told you, I'm like, like it, it came to me right in my face and I'm thinking like, mm -hmm. Hmm. So what, what is a good husband? <laughs> it's just like y'all said, like Ricky said, he got to do everything in order mm -hmm. to be considered a good husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, we already know we ain't got nobody. No, there's no one that's perfect. If he right. see, I stick with what actually I, Ricky, I gave your your side of it when me and Mr. Boss was talking. I said, just like Ricky said, if he's supplying necessities, the, the necessities of life for his family, then he should be considered a good man. But it's not enough. No, it's we, not see, enough. we we see it every every week. We we see it every week and every time we talk to somebody about oh you should be doing more. That's all it is. To black look look look. So they tell us even even with a football player, let's say you know the people they'll never attain or they'll never get. You know the one percent that they say they hug above and rub shoulders with, but can't never seem to lock down. Right? Oh, you a football player? Da, da, da. Okay, you got the money, you got the luxury, but now you got to spend more time with me. Right. You just ain't going going every town and not giving me the, the attention I need. Right. You're a businessman. No, you got to make time for me, too, even though a, a type personality for him to make that type of money has to be working all the time, mm -hmm. even when he with you. Damn, if you do. Damn, if you don't. So wait a minute. We, Easy Money, who is a nice young man, he's in the comment section here. He says men say they don't want anything for Father's Day. We can't turn around and cry about not getting anything. Pick a My, side okay, first. Okay. Oh, let me go first. Can I go first, please? <laughs> but wait a minute. I don't want him to derail us because I, I think he may just be trolling a little bit because we, we really want some answers. I really want some answers. Can this be done? What answer the question? Well, you want to address him first or you want to answer the question? Yeah, let me let me let me address that first real okay, quick. It's gonna be real quick in and out. No, 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 go ahead. The, re the reason that men don't want anything for, for Father's Day is because men are not celebrated. Men are not celebrated at all. And so men have gotten to the point they've gone so much without that you get to you become numb and you say, you know what, I'm good. I don't I'm good, I don't need nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. men, men are tired of, of neckties and socks and women are getting cars and watches and Apple products and laptops and cruises and trips and flu and going this way and flying out this way. And men get a pair of socks. Thank you, daddy, for being a daddy. You want some Sunday delight? I'm going a, I'm to a keep it a being with you. Why is it that I got to want something? Uh oh, why, why is it that do. why is it that mm -hmm. I gotta put out that I wanna want something? Look, my wife ain't gotta tell me she wants something for her birthday. Come on, for Mother's boy. Day. Come on, for boy. Christmas. We automatically respect the fact that you're the mother of our children. If I'm doing if <laughs> I'm on. doing I'm doing the job, why do I have to broadcast me wanting or needing something? Ain't you my wife what you supposed to be paying attention? Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. 
But y'all let a woman off the hook, right? Y'all left a woman off the hook because you don't want her to expect nothing. Yep. Mama can be a crackhead, biggest host south of Asia, and she's still gonna get the best for Mother's Day, best for her birthday. She it, still, and, that, and, and I and, and listen, I hear what he's saying. I understand what he's saying, but that's not the point. That's not right. That's not the point. The point is, no matter what y'all say, y'all keep trying to play like this stuff is y'all y'all willing to take this. Y'all are willing to stay in relationships in these things as long when they're one way. We were supposed to be watching out for each other. Absolutely. Right. No, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go mm -mm. No, no, I'm agreeing with you. We That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's to, supposed to be. Like, what, what? what is this, right? Why is it that? And like I said, th this stuff right here, he just proved my point that the expectations is different. It is. It is. It is. Because I'm gonna tell you something, uh, Ricky. My wife, in the high, my I can go in there right now with my wife. My wife, you know, the best thing I've ever heard my wife say when she get gifted for her birthday or Mother's Day. How you knew I wanted this? Because I pay attention. Pay attention, yeah. Right. My wife ain't never had to ask for nothing. I just watch her throughout the year. Oh, she liked that. Okay, all right, here it comes. And then I give it to her. She's like, man, how do you know I want this? What you when? I heard you on the phone talking to your sister about six months ago. Good for you, Easy Money Jones, but we're <laughs> talking about the mass population. Exactly. Good for you. Exactly. Why y'all always want to take y'all experience and try to put it off on other people? If we could, we wouldn't be able to diagnose the Easy Money if it didn't exist. If it wasn't there to see, why would I talk about it? But you so, want so, so but wait, wait a minute, Ricky. Attack it from where he's trying to come from. I think he's trying to say he's a good husband or a good father, or which one? I'm not sure, or both. There, and, there are some good, yeah. Are, are, and, and are we trying to compare that to say that the ones that maybe didn't get anything are not his yeah, was they, recognized, and, and maybe yours uh, wasn't not yours, it's in yours, but you know, yeah. Uh, there are some good fathers out there that, that just get completely neglected. I don't care what nobody say. There are some good men out here that just sit back and they're and they're suffering in silence. They don't say nothing. Okay, I didn't get enough for Father's Day. Cool, I'm good. But he's really not good. But he's cool. Like, damn, did nobody even think of me? So, Easy Money, you really think that we need to remind people that it's Father's Day and, <laughs> Come that, on. and, and that they have a father Excuse and, and they should? <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> it says the mass population needs to open their mouth. Don't talk about it if you're not going to do something about it, is what he's, this is his last comment. And I'm just wondering, is he saying that as fathers, you all need to mention that you all are fathers and that Father's Day is coming. But I'm going to do one better it's because the um, thing I've ever heard in my life. I don't think you need to wait to have a Father's Day. If somebody appreciates you, um, why not just let them know that they appreciate you? And I'm, not, I'm sure y'all kids do, but I'm talking about as a whole. As a whole, because again, we need to answer this question: Can bad husbands be good fathers? What do y'all yes. think? Yes. yes, absolutely. Yes, the relationships absolutely. are totally separate. Yep, the relationships are totally separate. The the relationship I have with my child is not the same relationship I have with my wife. Exactly. Right? So the truth is, <clears throat> the truth is, like I said, when we see it, when we see it in most cases, and I'm talking about the judgments of other people. Right. Mm -hmm. the, again, the majority, the majority is that a woman could be a bad wife, but she will still be loved and revered as a mother. Those two don't intertwine. But with black men, us especially, when one thing goes bad, everything goes bad. Right. right. If you're a bad husband, you're a bad father. If you're a bad father, you're a bad man. Those things are intertwined. Is the it's only a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should yeah. it be that way? No. But like I said, I don't have to be with your mother or treat your mother a certain type of way to be a good parent. No, your mother is your mother. Our relationships are totally separate and different. They're separate, right? So again, I use the I use the analogy. If a wife can be, if a wife can be, if a mother can, if a woman, I'm sorry, if a woman can be a bad wife and still be considered a good mother, why isn't it the same for a father? I, hey, hey, okay. mm -mm, go ahead, black man. See, I was going to say this from an anecdotal experience. So me being married, same thing happens in my family. Like, they're not, not in my immediate family. I'm talking about outside. When Mother's Day comes, uh, Ricky and security boss, 
Man, my brother-in-law, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, the, the people at the church. Oh, my God. My wife got bags over here, bags over there. When Father's Day come, man, I don't get a damn text message. Nothing. Don't nobody say nothing. Now, listen, women say men are not in the home. They did be dads. So I'm here every day. I'm taking kids to football practice basketball practice, softball practice, but I'm going back to what we said in the beginning, Ricky, that's what you're supposed to do. So let me ask you something. Before we do that, though, let me read these three super chats before we go on, because I, I need to, we need to define or make clear or what a good husband is, or to mm. say what a bad husband is. Okay. Uh, marriage, politics, and um, sports. Thank you so much for your $5 super chat. Of course, bad husbands can be great fathers, provided the estranged wife doesn't st stand in his way. Okay. And again, thank you again for your $2 super chat. Have a good show, SV and BMU. Dr. Steele, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. It's, um, it's ridiculous. ridiculous how black... Huh? Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. I was talking to you, so you're being funny. Go ahead. Oh, it's ridiculous how black men and um, women... A woman bash each other because of what only a handful of them do. Mm, it is ridiculous. But um, Marcus, thank you so much for your five dollars. He says hello to the big three. Thank you, Marcus, for being here. Thank you guys for your super chats. And we're going to continue to talk about this because I need to hear um, what is a bad husband or, or should we talk, tackle it the other way around? What would be well, the easiest? It's a two way. It's a it's a it's kind of like a loaded question. You know why? Because women will what a man will say what a bad husband is and a woman says a bad husband is is two different things. Like like uh, Ricky just said, a woman says a man a bad husband because um, he didn't. Um, OK, so I saw the the, the viral. You, probably, you guys probably saw it because you all the big content creators. But the video of the man that says when he grew up, he went to his mom and asked his mom, why did you divorce my dad? And she said, because he couldn't give me nice things. Mm. Right. So he was considered a bad husband because so he couldn't so, give her the nice things. OK, so you're saying and then he's, uh, so marriage politics um, thought this way, too, that when I say can a bad husband, we automatically think that that's a divorce situation mm -hmm. because it's bad. Then it should have it ended in divorce and it was done. That's the automatic right. thought to that. Yeah. What if it's not that? What if this husband is still currently a husband living in the home with his family mm -hmm. and his acts are what we would consider bad, meaning he's not being the head of the household. He's not offering the provision. He's not offering the time or the communication, the leadership that's supposed to be for his wife and children. His wife and children. Well, I'm going to say his wife because that's what comes first. He's not trying to become one with his wife. He's not doing these things that a marriage is required. Can he be a good father? Can Absolutely. he Can he be? You say yes? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I've heard these things, security boss. I've heard a woman say this in an argument. I'm, I'm, I'm at a cookout listening to the argument. I heard a woman say, Damn, I want something. I can't get it. But as soon as our daughter says she needs something, you right there. I've heard it. I've heard a woman complain that a man was there for his children more than he was for her. I've heard it right in my face. Okay, but but why would he why would that equal a good father? Just because he gave his daughter something over no, the be, No, because the woman felt like I'm just sitting there watching, but, but from her anger or whatever. The daughter, what happened was the daughter said, Daddy, I'm, I'm hungry or whatever. And he said, okay, baby, the girl's about 10 or 11. So he's like, okay, he went over there and fixed that baby a full plate, sat her down, made sure she had everything she needed. The wife said, see what I'm talking about? When I want something, it's a delay, right? But when she if she opens her mouth, everything she did want, it, it, she has it. He mm -hmm. do more for her than he do for me. I've I've heard that too before, especially especially for a new baby, or not new baby, but a toddler or something. A toddler, you know. uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I've I've yeah. heard that too. Women get jealous of their own children. I think it's I think it's simple because it's like you could have uh, to, to use the examples. It's as simple as this. It, you know that man do everything, but he don't take you know he don't like them kids, right? He a good man, but he don't like them kids, mm. right? So it's vice versa. Right. It's no different. It's, it's just a matter of what duties are aligned, what you believe a good husband is or a good man is. Right. Um, or a good father, I should say. So I think, again, for it to be that it, it'll be both. Right. You take care of the kids. Well, you lead them, you guide them, you discipline them correctly. 
Uh, you talk to them and you take care of your wife and the do and the duties thereof of the of the husband of the house, right? So, mm -hmm. I think I, I think the negative answer is the is the answer to the positive answer. Yes, you can because again, if I take care of everything my wife need, but don't you know? Let's say she had another man's kids and I don't like those kids and I don't take care of them kids and I want provision for them kids. I'm a bad father. Yep. Right. But I'm a good husband to her. Yep. Right. And it could be vice versa. Let's say, the, uh, like he said, with my daughter, I give my daughters everything. I make sure they're taken care of. I make sure they dress. They dress better than they, they wife. My wife, they look better than my wife. They take care of better than my wife. And I'm a good father. I'm a good father and a bad husband. Hmm. It's just that simple. Exactly. Exactly right. Hmm. That's hard. That's hard for me to see. So, OK, so let me ask you this question. How does how do you all think that in, infidelity affects children? It doesn't unless the parents allow. Impressive. it. Exactly. It, you took the words right out of my mouth, brother. We on the explain, same page. It, explain that to me. What do you mean? Because if, if, if we be if we're being 100 percent totally honest and transparent, mm -hmm. when there is infidelity in the marriage, the only way it gets out is that the parents spread their business. Exactly. Right. So, again, if the parents kept it within them and it became a discussion of something within them, then it would be different. But a lot of times they put that information out into the ether and then allow the children to make their own judgments. And we know if we're being honest, usually it's somebody trying to shade the other person because they felt they was done wrong or they were done wrong. However, you want to look at it and they, they belittle and make that person look bad in front of the children. Hmm. So I, I want you all to tell me about them. Oops, babies. Uh, oops, babies. OK, because you can't hide that. But T. Shaw has a question right here. He says, without addressing the the women, what is it? What is a good husband from a man's perspective? Well, I'll answer. You know what, T. Shaw, the other day, Andre 3000, one of the best rappers ever to live, had a comment. He said, "It's going in 10 years, we're going to have to go to a museum to see what a, 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 a real woman is and what a real man is. And, and I, right now, I can tell you I'm in a moment of confusion. Because the other day I heard men on a panel say, security boss, <laughs> listen to this. I don't know if you heard it. Men on a panel say, uh, provision, uh, providing, and protecting your family is toxic. That's a toxic way to lead in your in your marriage. Let, 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 me, let me say it again because I know people ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> All men, this is this is the comment that the young man made. All men say is that I'm I'm gonna provide and I'm gonna protect. That's all they talk about, providing and protecting. It don't work. That's why marriages are failing. So I don't know no more, mm -hmm. T Shaw. I don't know no more, T Shaw. Tell me. I don't know. But but wait a minute. I kind of when you said that the third time, I kind of understood what he was saying because it requires more than that. That's what he's saying. I think that's what the young man was saying. It requires more because um, our children these days do require the communication. You know, it used to be in our day, you just what I say is what I say. There was no communication. It just right. you do it. But these kids these days they require your time, and providing uh, provision and protection is not enough. We we want time. They want time. I can't protect what I can't control. They want time. They want communication. Uh, you have to actually get to know your children now, whereas when traditionally that wasn't a thing that they did. So what he's saying is your daddy just going to work and bringing the money home did not work for him or, or mm -hmm. there being there. If something broke out in the home or what have you, you know, did not work for him. He said he needed more of guidance, I should say, or whatever from his dad or mom that he did not get. And I think that's where we are now, just like the, the young boy on the sun. He needed him. His dad spent quality time together. Far as the protection go, the dad said he hated weapons. So, you know, that was his. Uh, he was like, why? You know, so that ain't how he protected that young man. The, actually, the young man probably didn't feel protected. So what that person said is what the young people are saying now. They were they're wanting more from their fathers and their mothers. So, um. I'm going to push against you guys a little bit about the infidelity. You are somewhat right when you say if they don't talk about it, then um, it won't, you know, it won't disturb the kids. But typically, or in our experience, not so much for me, but one of my sisters, it was found out about in the streets because, you know, we are, you know, the world was small back then. It's much larger now. <laughs> it was small back then. I should say, I don't know. I mean, it could be considered smaller now. But anyway, everybody knew everybody and things just, the, the noise just happened to, 
everybody heard it, the gossip, the noise or what have you. So for the kids not to know about infidelity, are you going with this one? You're going with that one. It, it was it wasn't going to last long. But I was just too young. But I, one sister actually got it. And also then I said, like I said before, what about the oops babies? So tell us about that. How do we how do the oops babies affect the children in the nuclear family? And is that considered a good husband? Or would y'all consider that something good? You're muted. Oh, um, I, you know, shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Kemp. They don't care. They tell the story all the time. Mr. and Mrs. Kemp, I know them very well. They're an older couple. They're probably in their 60s now. Um, on their wedding night, I mean, on their uh, they got married. Uh, years later, she found out her husband on his, the night before they got married, got a woman pregnant. The woman brought the baby over to the house uh, and left the baby. Miss Kemp said, at first she was angry, but watch this. She said, I was angry, but I'm a biblical woman. I love God. She said, I was angry, but I did I see him not. She said, I still have sex with my husband. I still fed my husband. I still did my wifely duties as a wife. And she said, I raised that child like he was my own. That son is still in that house to this day, along with the children that he had with her. It's four boys, right? The lady, the mom, ended up getting uh, oh, some oh, ovarian cancer, I think it was, and she passed away. Yeah. Right? They all went to her funeral and sat there. She sat in the funeral of the woman who her husband had <laughs> had sex with and got a baby on Right. This yeah. woman, this now this woman is amazing. Now he today to this day, Mr. Kemp is, a, is an awesome man. Yeah. Oh, he's amazing father. Uh, amazing husband. He's been rewarded by people. He's a firefighter. He was a firefighter for 30 years before he retired. And, you know, I mean, amazing guy. He just had a oops. He had a oops baby. And that, and that baby, she raised that baby like it was her own. And she said she maintained her sanity. And she maintained her femininity and she maintained her womanhood when it came to that outside baby. She said she, her, her husband never knew about her anger. She still moved like a wife. Okay. So I, and I can agree with you with that because I, I can see that that did work out. But what would the kids say? Would the kids call him a good father? Yeah, they do every fuck man. When I tell you they go out for their daddy, them mm. four boys. That was good. That's a good story. I, I, I'm asking y'all because this is a real thing. We pretend like it. it I, I just don't know because I'm just looking at that story. Go ahead. Go ahead. Rick and Come on, Rick. 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 Now, now, again, I, I, and somebody said in the chat the outside stuff. That's a fact. I got to agree with that, right? Because mm -hmm. the, street, the streets talk. That's a fact. Yeah. So yeah. I gotta I, when I'm when when I reassess, I reassess. I'll, I'll take a back seat, a back seat to that, right? So that's a fact. But I think outside kids is a big problem, right? We see, we hear too many stories, right? And it's like as B said, the world is small, <laughs> right? The world is small. It's big, but it's small at the same time. I've I've heard of too many stories, right? Of outside babies hooking up with their siblings. Oh. And yes, not sir. knowing, not yeah. knowing, yeah, right, that that was their brother or their cousin, yeah, right. So how does it affect the kids? Like, I mean, yes. you you get into it, never know that she end up pregnant. Y'all got the same daddy. Y'all baby about to be. It's a great. I ain't gonna say about to be, but it's a great chance that your baby come out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Messed up. So that's definitely like. uh it should be. And I think that's where the, it's the job of the adults. What's done is done at that point. Right. Right. What's done mm -hmm. is done. The adults have to be adults and, and, and introduce our families to each other. Introduce, hey, this is your sister. This is your brother. Yeah, this is what happened. When when a baby when a baby comes into play, when a child comes into play, the rules totally change for everybody. It changes for everybody because everybody owes those kids a duty to let them know who their family is. Yeah. So listen, um, before we do that, when before we went or uh, read Wynn's uh, comment, Anissa said something. That's a horrible thing. SB, that's a horrible thing to happen. Let's not make 
this an okay thing. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Anissa, but if you're talking about my, my dad's six kids, um, I don't know if they feel as though it's horrible or not. It's done. Yeah. And, and I can, oh, I might be wrong. No, no, no. I think she's talking about the Mama Kemp situation when she raised the baby and stayed a wife. Well, let me tell you something. Um, if Mr. Kemp was a good husband and this is something that happened, he made a mistake. I can see how that could how Mama Kemp could embrace that child and bring her that child into her home and raise it as her own. I could see that very much happening. And I could see Mr. Kemp not ever making that mistake again. Nope, I could definitely see. So exactly. if you're talking about that, oh no, no, she says SB the outside kids. Um, if you're talking about my outside kids, um, I really don't know how to ex to, to, to explain that to you, Anissa, or anybody that might be going through something like that, because I'm a very much a grown woman. And like I said, um, it's like Ricky said, that that kind of thing wasn't brought up in our house when we were younger, far as I go, because I wouldn't have been able to understand it as I got older. You know, I start hearing things, but you don't know of things because it was definitely kept separate. You know, it's not like Mr. Kemp's situation where the woman brought the child over. None of that ever happened. Um, so I couldn't tell you that someone came and dropped off a child at the door. And, you know, I don't even know if my mom knew all about these things that um, I'm hearing now. But like I said, though, I, I have different memories of him than my sister. My sister's memories may not be are not as good as mine. She probably don't have any good memories of him. Right. So I'm like, I don't know quite what to think because he, he, I can't change who he is. He can't take back. Like, it's like Ricky said, the deed is done. What do you do now? What, what am I supposed to, what, what's supposed to happen now? You know, is he a good father? Was he a bad husband? Would my mom say that? She stayed married to him to death. You know, they had, they had issues within their marriage, but everybody does. So again, this is kind of, it's kind of one of those things I want to talk about that I think we should talk about because are we, are we being good parents? Are we being good husbands? Are we being good wives? Cause the same thing with the wife, if, if a wife, a woman would have a child, just like that woman today. Well, I told you about the story. She probably pretended she did pretend that those four kids was his, but to say she didn't. And, and he, she kept having these kids on the outside of marriage, you know, and he stayed married to her. Would we consider her a good mom? No. Well, wait a minute. We might have considered her a good mom, but she definitely wasn't a good wife, right? Mm -hmm. So, well, well, the thing is, security boss. If the you lion, the, the, wait a minute. Then before I say this, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. man. I didn't mean to no, cut no, you. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Go ahead, go came, ahead. The lying and the deception is is what is what gets you. See, lying and deception, I, that's not good. I don't care who do it. So that's what kind of takes me, you know, got me thinking differently. But go ahead, Black Man. I'm sorry. So, so Rika, you heard the story about what happened with the lady and the four babies, right? You were listening to that, right? Okay. You know what? You know what women are going to be saying in those comments or out loud on panels? You don't know what that lady was going through. He could have been cheating on her. He 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 probably forced her outside to go have them babies with them other men. You don't know what was going on in that household. But if the roles were reversed, dog ass nigga, she was good to him. Look at her. She looked like a woman that cooked and cleaned and took care of them babies. And his dog ass went out there. I'm glad he did. It's two different, completely different things. It's two. That's what I'm saying. So, I, you know, I mean, but you, that, Ricky, go ahead. Man, dad, I don't even look at that either way, to be honest. Um, Like, what about those babies, though? What about the babies? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, she'd rather kill, delete herself than be wrong. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Caught up. I think that's 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 hubris at at and vanity at its highest levels. Um, the when it when it comes to that stuff, like only a woman know who she slept with. Only only a woman know who she slept with. And I tell you all the time, it's it's a lot of men out here taking care of kids that that believe they theirs and they are not. Oh. More than y'all, more than y'all, more than y'all care to admit. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's read this uh, from Tisha. Tisha, thank you so much for your comments. She says, my problem with the outside kids in marriage is the fact that your job as a husband is to protect me as a child, protect me, or even as a wife, protect me. Um, you had unprotected sex with another woman. Where was my protection? So that, that would, that would clearly put you into the bad husband zone. Mm -hmm. Clearly. You, but it don't make you a bad father. Exactly. 
don't know, y'all. I don't know. I don't know. It Listen, we, we got I understand to understand what y'all saying. I understand yeah. what y'all saying, but it don't. It just don't. I'm sorry. It's because two it different didn't work out with y'all. Yeah, it didn't work out with y'all. But it, but like but I it said, can be absolutely wonderful. But hold on. But hold on, BMW. But but if I give it to y'all, then y'all just proving my point. I said. So what now? If, if we... I if I give it if I get that point to y'all then y'all just proving the point I said when I came on was was what the point you came on you said you can absolutely be a good father and not a good husband no, is what, what you said that, oh. that 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 no that black men are held to a different standard oh mm-hmm. yeah yeah you mm-hmm. said that right. mm-hmm. but wait a minute somebody said something about hip the hypocrisy I wonder I, I missed that one go back let me see can I find that one. I want to see something about some hypocrisy because we trying to figure some things out. Oh yeah, she um, says that it's Anissa. Oh, I wish she could come up. And Anissa said, it, "Yeah, it's me. It's the hypocrisy for me." Okay, what is the hypocrisy? There is a man versus a woman, or what? I, I, Anissa, can't, come on up here, girl. And so, because reading your comments, I'm sorry, it's hard to follow. I am. It's hard to follow. Listen, all this is very tragic when it happens within marriage or, or in relationship. We're not denying that. But the question is, can these type of things, whatever makes you a bad husband? Mm-hmm. whatever it is. I, I, it could be a lot of things. It doesn't have to be infidelity. It could be some other things. You could be terrible with money. You could be a gambler. You yeah. could be uh, unstable. It, it could be, you could be schizophrenic. It could be a lot of things that contribute, that can contribute to you being a bad husband. The question is, while in that state as a bad husband, can you still be a good father? And I'm, I'm y'all, y'all say yes, as men, I am questioning that because I'm wondering you can treat your children very well, but what is the what is the guidance and the message or the leadership that you're actually instilling in your children? Because remember, if we if we lean on infidelity, you're teaching lies and deception. Now, now, son, uh, you 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 t- uh, whatever age because you do a younger now these kids so ten times smarter. Uh, son, um, you were conceived with another woman. Uh, your daddy went out and made a huge mistake. Um, and he, and it was infidelity against your mom. Now, I wanted you to know this because I wanted to be honest with you. Um, you are a product of another woman. Mm. And uh, I know you I know you think mama and there's real mama. Mama and there ain't real mama. Um, ain't T. George is your mama. And I want you to know that um, I love you and I can't go back. If I could go back and change it, I would, but I cannot. Now, what I want to do is I want to take a journey with you into into healing from this so you tell me what we need to do next to heal from this and we move forward that's good black man so you said communication would be the key to all of this communication yeah i would think so but because initially we were divorcing we were saying bad husbands divorce and i'm like wait a minute wait a minute i don't want to divorce i want to live within this because we do have some people that are traditionally married and are married for life so there could be some bad situations that we find ourselves in. Um, but can we still be good fathers? Because like I said, guys, um, for me, I have some good memories of my my dad being a good father to me. But I can tell you that he was not a good husband to my mama. Mm. He was not. Right. And if yeah. you didn't find that out, if you didn't find out what you found out about your, da- your dad telling you that, you would still have the same mindset about your dad. He's the greatest thing ever. No, not the greatest thing ever. I wasn't going to lie. I, I knew my dad as I got older. I saw mm-hmm. him coming in too late. Okay, I, okay, okay. I saw, you know, I saw, I didn't, now mind you, they didn't have no fights or arguing. He never beat my mom or none of that kind of stuff. But I, I saw some things that I wouldn't have accepted from my husband, but, and there's nobody perfect. You get what right. I'm saying? Right. And, and what was her role in that? Cause she, she was, she was mean sometimes, you know, she was a mean woman. She could get, she could get nasty, you know? You know, she could be absolute, <laughs> you know, so I, I chalk that up to relationship. They just didn't know how to do relationship. Hey, sugar bum. So that's how I left that. I, I, right. I didn't blame that on either one. So both of them had their indiscretions per se. But um, when you say you add the kids in six kids and whatever, I do question it. But again, like I said, I'm the one who's saying I have some good memories of my daddy being in my life. My sister, she don't have that. Her her negativity outweighs all of that. Her neck because she's older, so she remembers more. She's you know she's there more. She sees more. You know she right. can identify or understand more. I should say. Mm-hmm. So 
it's different for her. And that's crazy because we all live in the same house. That's what's weird right. about it. We all live right. in the same house. So that's, this is what it's a matter of perception. Yeah. If that's the case, it's a matter of perception. Well, I think it's I think it's just she knew more because she was older. You know what I mean? Like I might not know anything about husband, wives having sex, you know, cheating and stuff like that where she was older and she had come. She knew about it. I did. You know, I wouldn't I wasn't old enough yet to know about all that type of stuff. I so, I got you. Yeah. So that that's how I think that came about. So this is this is this is the question that I'm asking. Then I go on to the son. The son, I, I didn't, I still think the man was good, good, a good husband while he was there because we didn't see anything negative. And I still think he was a good father, but it was not enough. There was something that happened with that young boy that I think happens a lot in our community, black man. You are familiar with the movie. Uh, Ricky, are you familiar with the son, the movie, no, the son? I haven't, I haven't seen okay. it. Yeah, it's on Netflix, brother. You can, yeah, that's a pretty good, bro. I think that's something that happens a lot, even in our community. They were not, but even in our community, I think that happens to our children. That breakdown of that nuclear family and it causes issues. We know what the issue was there and we may not go that far in our communities, but I still think that certain things really at stress our darn kids a lot and we have no idea. But I'm saying, is that the fact that we are bad husbands and wives or is it we just not, you know, I'm just still I, debating I, it. I mean, if I'm if I'm being honest in, within my own mind, I just think like and it's like you said, uh, as be that. It's just some things that uh, as a child, you're not going to understand or put together till you get older mm. with the dynamics as far as your, your your parents, you know, or the the relationship that's your parental unit. It's just some things you wasn't supposed to understand. Right. So like and I, I, I mean that. In, in the clearest way I can. I look back now and I see the things that went on. I'd be like, for real? Yeah. You know, stuff back then, I thought, you know, that it was my stepfather fault, but it was really my mama and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think so. So if we if we want to be 100 percent transparent, I'm going to backtrack like a bit right now. Right. Um, thinking about it. Right. So if our job is to protect the children to make sure the children are real wild, and then I gotta I gotta take my answer back. I'm a man, I was wrong, and say yes, that it does affect the children, right? Because if it's our job to protect them and show them the way, and we even have to put them through the job of trying to put this puzzle together or something that they wasn't even supposed to understand, that's a distress on them, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Apparently it is. And we don't even know it because we just we're just living our lives and we moved on to the next. I'm talking about wives, too. Like when I if I if I woke up one morning and like y'all said, it's been, women are now divorcing their husbands because they're not happy or whatever the situation is. And I moved on to another husband. But my son loves his dad. They have an excellent relationship. But I just took everything normal away from him. And put something else in front of him that it all looks good on the exterior. Everything looks great. But mentally or spiritually, what did I do to that child? Right. Am I being a good mother by doing that? Of so, course I'm not. I'm not. Y'all, I'm not. I'm, I'm taking but, care of my own selfish needs. Mm -hmm. Of course. But, but I'm not I'm what? not looking out for that child. I'm not. But but guess what, though, security boss? This is what Ricky said. Ricky, Ricky said that the, the standards are is set up differently because. Even if you did that, security boss, how many moms are still celebrated after their kids found out they host? <laughs> You're right. No, I'm not. Listen, I'm not saying we're doing anything right. This is all dysfunction, straight up. But it's just like we we are fighting for the nuclear family because right. we understand that that family is where our kids are the most productive. It is best for everybody all the way around. But if we're in that nuclear family, and we're having bad mothers or bad fathers. Are we producing good kids? Is that right. is that the is that is that what that equals? Or are we being married in the nuclear family, but we still terrible fathers, right? Or terrible I, mothers? I, you know what I'm I, saying? I, right. You know what thing, security boss, that I've learned from you, and I've also learned from reading, and also being married as well. Married people should have more of these conversations, right? And I thank God for people just like Rick, and I thank God for you, security boss, for being able to have these conversations because we need to come back those people who haven't experienced the notion of a marriage. 
security boss, let me ask you an, 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 a question and I want Ricky to answer it as well. How many people would be divorced right now if they got if if they let if they got a divorce only because they were unhappy? Everybody. Yeah, you know that. Everybody. Right. So my point is to my, my buddy in the chat here, Scam, like you said, bash women for leaving due to unhappiness. There's a reason that they are leaving. Just because a person is unhappy does not give them the right to say, I'm packing my bags and leaving. Because if that was the case, the damn divorce rate would be at 100%. Because, mm -hmm. Ricky, have you had days where you were unhappy? Of course. <laughs> So have I, security boss. Oh, come on, security boss. They, they want to listen. I, that's that's that, listen. You in marriage? A marriage is a real thing. It's this is not um, your girlfriend that you made your wife. This is someone that you become one with. Exactly. Um, it, it's a different thing. It's a different feeling. It takes it takes a different requirement from you. Uh, you just don't leave your wife. Right. If if just you I'm unhappy. Type, right. No, well, no. Period. You just don't just leave your. Don't wife. leave. Yeah. It's, it's it's more to it than that. Right. Um. If it is, then you probably not being a good husband. <laughs> you probably yeah. wouldn't a husband to begin with. And you're probably not a wife if you're just going to leave your husband because he's not making you happy. It requires more. That's yeah. why this, this is what we're talking about. This is why the nuclear family is so important. This is why yeah. this is this is why we having this conversation. Um, but someone else said something. I saw something in the um, comment section. I think it was from Clement. Clement talked about King David. Uh, mm -hmm. Clement, God did mm -hmm. talk about king david that way and because he knew and king david messed up a lot y'all know mm -hmm. you know all the things he did even got the woman pregnant went and tried to make it right go get your husband Went out there to get a husband husband was fighting war he wanted to go get him to try to cover up their indiscretion mm -hmm. but he was a man after god's heart we're not talking about somebody like he's like mr kemp mr kemp made a mistake and he, you know he wills to do right he's not going to do this anymore it's a bit different I mean, I don't know if that's what we're talking to or not, but each situation has to be examined to whether it's a good man or a mistake or what have you. We already know that. So we're not trying to judge it on that, you know, because everybody's situation is going to be different. We're just asking the question, though, can a bad husband be a good father? Um, and I, I'm leaning because one moment I'm, I'm vasculating y'all because one moment I'm saying, yeah, yeah, could be a pretty good husband because. I mean, a pretty good father, because what are we judging a good father on? What makes him a good father? But then one, then the next minute, I think of something else. And I'm like, wait a minute. Hey, he a husband. But you know what? I love how people, you know what, security boss? Like, none of us are perfect, right? right? Right. A lot of us believe in Christ, and we believe in the word, and we believe in all this stuff. You know, we believe, right? And so everything's not, not going to get, uh, everybody's not going to be perfect. I think that we're running into the situation where everybody believes in God, but they don't believe him. And I think that, uh, you know, like my, my work, uh, I, I guess, you know, my, my brother in the chat scam is upset because he just said, hmm? you know, uh, F them vows. It's about reality. Oh, my. So uh, those vows. So nobody just don't do them. Just don't get married. Just. This I mean, but what, uh, who? Uh, wait a minute, though. Wait a minute, y'all know I got a question about this reality thing because I'm trying to figure out who dictates reality. Uh oh, That's, uh, I'm gonna sit who? back and wait. I don't think you ever gonna get that answer. But I'm gonna I wait. need to know who 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 tells me what my reality is. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait <laughs> on that answer. That would have to come down slowly, surely to what solely to what I believe. Yes. So I need to know what what reality I'm living in because I mean, really, Ricky, what you got on that? Mr. Your, rea you know, your, your re reality is is uh, dictated by you and your mind state and what you believe to be true, plain and simple, short and sweet. It definitely uh, should, but you know what's going on, Ricky, and I, meant, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm going to let yeah. you finish. Sorry, Ricky. But sure. what they're sure. allowing is the reality to be the world. The world is telling them what they should think and what they should do and base it on what other folks are doing. That's what their reality is. That's a sad reality. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ricky. Go ahead. Oh, you all right. You was all right. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think it's all it's at the end of the day, in the beginning of it and lunchtime. Right. It's really just what you can tolerate and what you're willing to put up with. And if that person is worth it to you, I said this 100 times, I'm going to say it 101. Right. If that person is worth it to you. And if you're being honest with yourself and um, you're keeping it a beam, you're going to work on them. You're going to work on it, work on it with them. If they not worth it to, it to, to you, they not. It's just that simple. Right. I, it's not complicated. Right. I see in the chat here, another one says, uh, 
try to tell your wife, remember your vows when you're arguing and, and watch what happens. Well, then your wife ain't really being, <laughs> your wife really is out of line. Because if a husband is saying, hey, babe, remember the vows we took. You know what? I went to a wedding. My cousin had a wedding. Oh, most beautiful ceremony ever. They had a wooden box at the altar. And the pastor, he did something very unique. He said, uh, I want you to go over and give me the first, one of the first thing. He asked them to collect things that they kept while they were dating. And so she brought over their first napkin from their first dinner that she had left, uh, had found in a purse and all this other these other remnants or whatever. And he put it all in the box and he shut the box and had them lock it together. And he said, when you get to a point in your marriage where you have to be reminded of how you got here, I want both of you to open this box. And it had things of how they built their marriage. I mean, built their relationship, dating. I mean, courting. They was courting. Courting. And then they got, then the, you know, went through the process of that and then getting married. They had everything in that box. That was a beautiful thing, right? And so when it comes to what he just said, I don't. I don't agree with that. I think a man should be a leader. That's a leader to remind your wife, hey, babe, I understand where you are. I understand, I'm trying to understand you right now, but you do have to consider, sweetheart, of the vows that we took. We are in bad times right now. And we took a vow and a commitment to be here with each other through these bad times. And if she come back at you, then you you merit the demon. But But we can't forget that sin is a problem. It is. I mean, even I hear people talking all the time and you say these vows don't work and um, God is not real and all these things. The Bible is this and the Bible is that's old, you know, old history or what have you. Um, it, it confirms old history confirms itself daily. Right. Daily. It does. You can find exactly what you're going through daily. But but don't forget, though, sin was also incorporated in that. So if you have these people like myself and black man and Ricky up here that are in marriages, and we're doing what we're supposed to do. Don't think that sin is still not around us. Right. It's, 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 it, we're not, <laughs> we still can be tempted, fall into, fall off the cliff. We have our days too. So don't hold us to a standard that uh, is of God or Jesus. We're not perfect. Yeah, let's, just I mean, be, let's, let's just be transparent. I've, been, I've had moments in my younger years when I, I've been in it 14 years, man. You know, I, when I was younger, I've said some dumb stuff. I've done some dumb, dumb stuff, made some bad decisions. I've been trash at times in my mind and the way I think, the things that I say as a father and a husband. Damn, right? We got to be transparent. I've been there, right? I, I, I noticed. Though, am I the only man? one? No, listen, I noticed that in these spaces when there are people who try to be of high moral character and of principles and of good foundation, that it's always we got to be perfect or, you know, they hold us to a standard. I'm going back to what Ricky said. Now the standard is so high. Ricky is high for it's higher for a man than it is for a woman. But even in that vein, it's higher, mm -hmm. you know, as though we can't be people. We have, we're not affected by things of the world. We are, but we try to sin not, you know, we try to still hold our standards and, and be ethical in what we do. We don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I I feel you, it, but I mean the so so <laughs> what 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 they asking for? What what are they asking for? What y'all asking for? How it goes, right? The truth of the matter is, like you don't nobody know what's going on when you first going into this thing, right? We both learning each other. We both learning. Now I understand how the chat and the world want to look at it. How it's supposed to be. Oh, we're married, and he was supposed to think of me at all hey, times. Up, she guys? was supposed How you to guys doing tonight. Good evening. Good evening. It's like you know, she, he was supposed to think of me and consider me in all his moves, and she was supposed to be respectful and listen to him as a leader. And do it. We're learning each other. There's gonna be mistakes. There's gonna be fumble oh. balls. There's gonna be times where it doesn't go right. Yes. Now. Now, we all know the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? So it's not mm -hmm. about what you intend to do. It's about what you really do, right? So what y'all want to know? Y'all want to know is this. If you live with somebody, you make a life with somebody, there's going to be trouble roads. There's going to be hard times where you guys are not on the same level of understanding. But if that person mm -hmm. is worth it, you will work it out. You will find a way. The problem is, is that a lot of y'all be with people. Y'all don't find work. 
Exactly. Or, exactly. or we're, we're lost within ourselves. Sometimes you have to be whole in order to see exactly what is good for you or what is needed. If you're not, if you're broken or if you're lacking, you, you, you're not going to be able to attract what you want. So you're going to see everything incorrectly. Yeah. The, the world, the world is telling everybody, leave your marriage. You're you unhappy. Leave. Leave. You don't have to stay there. Leave. Right. The foxhole women say leave. Right. The women that will never get married, who has a big German shepherd standing by the back door that want to get away from them. Leave. You don't mm -hmm. have to be leave the simps. Hey, man. Hey, ladies, leave. You don't have to be with these guys. Leave. <laughs> it's yeah. not like that in marriage. If I left when I was unhappy, shit, I would have no kids. I'd be gone to hell a year in. I have moments. I have moments where I was unhappy with with, with, with my wife. It's gonna be moments where you're not gonna be happy. This temporary stuff. This is why marriages are breaking up because we're living in the temporary, and we're not making marriage necessary. I, I, I got bars tonight. I, I think it's. I think it's also. It's. It's a huge influence to. Um, we're so selfish. Remember, I told you I was, and I, I'm gonna say it to the end. A, a selfish person can't be in a marriage. Exactly. So anytime a marriage breaks up, it's because one or the other got selfish. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, you know, you can be selfish, but, you know, you can actually turn it on to the point you can't be with someone else. And I think that's always the case. We can examine. You could say, oh, they didn't pay a bill. Keep working at it. Keep working. What is that motive behind not paying the bill? It was some selfish act. So it's always that. And I think nowadays that we care so much about ourselves because we've gotten so far away from our creator, the person who made us, our purpose for being here. We've gotten so far away from it. We have no essence of doing things correct. It's just, Man. it's all about us. Yep. Us, us, us. But let's, um, let's say hello to a few people and then um, we'll get back to it. Ekene, hello, sir. How are you? Mm. Oh, you muted Ekene. me, dog. Yeah, how are you doing, SB? How I'm doing you? good. I'm, hey. yeah, I'm doing good. Volo, how are you? Wait, well, I'm just... uh, NBU, what's up, guys? What's going on, Ekene? What's going on, man? Volo, yeah. <laughs> BMU, Scale. Okay. What's going on, and what's going how y'all doing? All right, so I, we're gonna we're gonna take y'all in the order y'all came in. Ekene, go ahead and add what you have to add, sir, because you were in here first. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, if you look at it this way, right. Uh, relationship is complicated. It's very complicated, but the thing is this. You have uh, uh, both parents uh, want to win argument when it comes to their kids. And they want to present themselves in a good light in order to win the hearts of their kids. But mostly on the feminine side. You know, whenever you your dad and your mom are fighting, your dad might show his anger in public. Your mom will show her manipulation in secret, but then show her frustration in public. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when a man and a woman gets into an argument, men tend to show their frustration regardless of which of their children is there. They show like, knowing that it pays because men like to exert authority. Okay. But who usually will start the fight or the argument is the mom, but her manipulation starts in the secret, maybe in the bedroom or through discussion or through disagreement. That's what many people don't get to see. You see what I'm saying? So many okay. people don't get to see the beginning of the argument. They only see the end of it. So that's why you see, when kids grow up, they said what their dad did, what their dad did. But then they didn't see what their mom did because their mom wasn't showing what she's doing in the public. She shows what she does in the secret. Then, like, uh, one thing that makes family so complicated is this. We as kids, we are not privy to a lot. But our dads would tell us that our mom is doing something bad. But, you know, as a dad, he doesn't go too far into, you know, saying what happened or how it started. 
Because men are not into that kind of attitude. But your mom will tell everything. So it's up to us as kids. When we grow up, start dealing with women, then we start seeing what our dad went through. <laughs> you see? Because we don't get to see it as little kids. We get to see it as adults. That, whoa, my dad really went through a lot by my mom. But as kids, we were thinking that our mother was a saint. So, like I do okay. say to, well, that, like I do say most of the time, I say to people, to men all the time, no matter what your woman does, don't lose control. Because once you put your hands on her, you lose the argument. She wins the argument because all her thing is for you to put her hands on her. Because women don't fear physical uh, pain. They endure a lot physically. So a woman can push you to the brink of you putting your hands on her. She's going to win regardless. But as a man, what you should do, if it gets to a, a level of whereby you can't control yourself, you're going to put yourself in trouble over this woman. I don't believe in divorce, but I believe that you should leave. Leave that relationship. You can come back later, but always show a woman that you can leave. So, Ekene, I got a, I got a question. So, the man putting his hand on the woman, is he a bad husband? I will tell you this. A man putting his hands on a woman is not a bad husband. But it's not a good judgment. So, what would you call it? Um, putting your hands on your woman doesn't mean you don't love her. But that no, 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 no. no. I, I we're not talking about bad, love right a, now. A, a, a bad judgment. About, does bad that make judgment. him, in his bad judgment, of putting mm -hmm. his hand on his woman, if he mm -hmm. do such a thing, is he a bad husband? Oh, bad husband. I wouldn't call that a bad husband, but I would say he demonstrated he, he's demo, he demonstrated something not good, something that can qualify him a bad husband. But a bad husband is a strong word. It it, it, it constitutes so many things. Okay, so when you it's say like saying that a dad a dad that puts his hands on his son is a bad father. It's not so you're father. saying like put his hands on us like this was an episode, not as though he was in the. If he's consistent, if he's consistent, if he's habitual, he's a bad, he's a bad husband. Oh, okay, okay, I got you now. Okay, I thought you were okay. I understand. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Hold on, we're gonna go to the. Uh, so how would you answer this question? Can a bad husband be a good father? Me? Yeah, Ekene, how can you answer that question? Do you think oh, a, a bad, bad husband can be a good father? A bad husband can be a good father. It's not a good thing. I wouldn't say that a bad husband because it seems like the man loves his children but hates his wife. Okay. It's not a good. Uh, it's not a good role model. Oh, so he's not. It's not good. It's not. Oh, okay, good. not good. Okay, okay. So listen, we're gonna go down the line here, Bolo. Bolo, can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm here. Okay, so Bolo, I want you to answer the question, but I know you're gonna answer it in your own way. Can a bad husband be a good father? I mean, straightforward. Uh, nah. No. When you look at the bigger grand scheme of things and how the ripple effects affects the children and the example that that father leaves, no. And it would be the same thing for a woman. A bad mother can't be a good parent because there are things that you are going to be an example that you show that they're going to pick up. And it's going to be so small that you may not even see it, that they pick up. Ultimately, can you know? Can you instill good things into them? Absolutely. Absolutely. But we're not looking at it from the eyes of man. We're looking at me, personally. I look at it from the eyes of God. No. Hmm. Okay. All right. So let's go over here to uh, Scam. Scam, I want you to answer the question. Then you can give your context if you like. Uh, can a bad husband be a good father? Um, they're separate, but connected. So it can be yes. And it can be no, it depends on how, how it all goes down. Are you saying particular, whatever the incident is that made them bad husband yeah. like that? Let's not pretend that the relationship you have with your spouse doesn't affect the kids. Let's, let's not pretend that it doesn't. Okay. What do you mean by pretend? Uh, okay. According to Kenny smacking your wife a few times, it's not that big of a deal. So I guess you got to stab her to be a bad husband. Or shooter, I, I don't know what we're doing up, bro. No, I, I didn't say that. No, hey, what, what I so I hold, on, hold on, just a second. If I can just in it. <laughs> so there, if you go uh, TED Talks or 
shit, I don't know. That's a lot. Um, when you hear marriages or, or, or couples that have been married for 20, 25 years get up and say, hey, listen, in the first few years of my marriage, my husband was physically abusive, but God changed him. Do we consider that a bad husband? Or do we consider that a man who had a moment in time where he was an abusive man and he like because you have women that say in our first year of marriage he hit me but in the last 23 years he has not ever put his hands on me again he was mm. a bad husband at the time black man at right. the time yeah he was at the time that don't mean he can't change and be I, that's like i said to ikini it's a difference between domestic violence and a person having a bad judgment i think that's what he was right. trying to say so, you know what you, you, oh go ahead bolo yeah what i'm gonna say is this um BMU, you're absolutely right, right? We all have moments where we where we slip, mm -hmm. right? And, and 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 growth is you know growth is very important. Forgiveness absolutely. is very important, absolutely. right? A, a lot of the times people marry for happiness. Doesn't say that in the scripture. There marriage we go. Is, marriage is work, right? And and what we fail to understand, marriage is about the other. Marriage for me is about my wife, and for her, it's about me. It's not about myself. And when you hear these talking points that these cats be given, it's about self-gratification. So when we're talking about being in alignment with the father, right? Because I go off, that does not give permission to my wife to go off with me. She has to stay in alignment with the father and vice versa. If my wife goes off, that does not give me liberty to go off with her. So we tend to try and separate all these things. Being a good wife is being connected to the father and understanding your position and understand what comes with that. Being a good father is understanding your position and understand what comes with that and understand that all of these things are intertwined and we cannot compartmentalize them. We can have conversations pertaining to them, but they're all intertwined and it's impossible to separate them. And that's what we do. Anecdotally, we try in our experiences in life, we try to separate them and say, Yes, he can be a, a, a good father in as in most aspects, right? But if he's not a good husband, you don't think that the daughter is going to see that? You don't think his daughter is going to pick up little things, nuances? You don't think the son is going to pick up? So there's different things that, you know, and it's, and it's vice versa with the woman. You don't think the, the son is going to pick up if she's not a good mother? So all of these things we have to take into consideration when we talk about, you know, marriage. You know, because at the end of the day, people are looking for the feeling of love opposed to the work of love. Mm. They're looking for feelings. They're not looking for the work. When you look at Proverbs 31, that woman was a response to something. She responded. Mm. <laughs> These cats, yeah. you know, this is why relationships break. I feel, feel there's no context or perspective to feeling. I just know that, you know, uh, Ricky stepped on my Jordans. Everyone knows I'm a sneakerhead. That's the, I'm angry. But context and perspective would be, well, a car was going to hit him and he needed to get out the street and he wound up stepping on my sneaker. Now, am I still going to be pissed off and upset at him? No. So when we just go into the feeling opposed to the work, when yes. there is work, how do I know that Ricky is a good dude? I seen him work. When we were out in the streets banging, that dude never left my side. So I trust him with my life. We worked. And, and, and that's the point. So how do I know that my wife might slip? I know she's a good woman. She had a moment of slipping. I know that that's a good man, but he slipped. Come on, I came up. home, he had a hard day, and I said something real crazy, and he can't, and you know what? All the lines, it was a perfect storm. So we need to start looking at things deeper opposed to feelings, man. This is not about happiness. This is Come about on. fucking it out and making it happen. That's what this is about. And that's the problem that we're having in these, in, in these, especially in our community. Our community, you know what I'm saying? You make that perfect person perfect for you. There are no people perfect for anyone. I'm going to make that specific woman perfect for me, and that woman's going to make that man specifically perfect for him, and that's how we move on. And that's the issue. We got to start being more straight-laced. And the one thing I like about Ricky is he don't talk that much. He's straight <laughs> to the point up and down straight up like six o'clock baby that's what it needs to be and that's our problem our problem is we're not strong enough just to say nah 
we got to try our best to cover the whole gamut, not the thing that's going to make us feel good. That is the problem. The problem there is, is we're stuck in this thought process of I got to make you feel good. Me being your brother or me being you being my sister is not about me making you feel good. It's about me telling you the truth. And because we have our trauma, because we have our experiences, because we have our anecdotal experiences in our own life, that's what keeps us from seeing the truth because the truth is the truth. No matter who says it or how it's said, the truth is the truth. But because of our experience, because I don't want to see it, I choose not to accept it. <laughs> That's our problem. All right. So hey, listen. Bolo. Hold on. Can I say one thing to Bolo? Bolo, I've yes, been sir. saying this for weeks. I've been telling people, where in the good book that it says you're going to be happy? Where <laughs> in the vows does it promise happiness? It's it not there. It's not. It's not. So listen, before we go on, and I'm come right <laughs> back to you, Scam. Before we go on, though, we're going to do these super chats, and we'll get back into it. Um, thank you, Clement. For your five dollars super chase says look at david in the bible um was a good father slash husband watch how you answer because god said david was a man after god's heart perspective i am mm -hmm. thank you clement thank you again clement for your five dollars super chat that's why i refer to the bible as the because too many people living and making decisions of the world instead of the standard of god and what he created absolutely thank you clement i got something to say <laughs> Hold on, hold on after, for a minute. After, after you finish, ma'am, I got something to say. Oh, well, wait, 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 we got to come back around first of all. Preach, Bolo. Thank you, Marcus, for your $2 super chat. So um, we got one more. Hold on for a minute, guys. Um, dust, but go ahead. Yeah, no, no, we're coming back to you, Scam. Okay. Well, I was looking for the other super chat before we did that. Oh, Anissa had a comment here. She says, SB, let's normalize her and not women. Let's normalize not hitting your spouse and not cheating and definitely no outside kids <laughs> let's normalize it normalize, not oh <laughs> okay all right i don't want to normalize it i don't want it to be normal it's too normal now but i got you thank you so much anisa but um al what's going on with you define good husband and good parent we've been trying to do that thank you so much for your two dollars super chat it's good to see you um we're gonna continue to do that and let's go ahead and go to dusto dusto go ahead and continue to tell us what you were getting ready to say sir yeah, I almost can't believe what I'm hearing because y'all know y'all's daughters. If if Ike Turner or Joe Jackson starts knocking that melon in, smacking her face, y'all ain't going to say, well, you got to stay because of God. He going to change. Y'all know you. Absolutely not. Somebody raises that hand, you're going to be be out the door. But and why, saying, do, why do you say that, sir? What, do, what are you hearing us say? What are God you hearing us say? Yeah, do, you really, do you really think what you're saying is true? Do you know do you know how many young people are in a domestic violence situation and you can't you can't pray that they come out of it you can't even go get them and drive them out of it because they'll be right back there the other day do you know the major fear of men protecting women is because they are fearing that they go protect the man and the woman's gonna jump on their back because they're hitting their man that's the number one fear I hear of black men is that I can't get involved in that particular fight because she might jump on my back and guess what she gonna be with him tomorrow mm -hmm. do you, you hear this right you hear this all the time but I'm gonna tell you where you're wrong you're wrong with one thing um, if my daughter married a man and and she entered into a domestic violence situation that is her husband i can only tell her to make the best decision for her if she married that man and that man was beating her and she bought that in she bought into that that is on her i can only pray for her and hope she gets out and until she needs my help i can't do nothing for her i can't do anything that's her husband nothing supersedes your marriage you talking about a 25 plus 30 year old coming to your mama and your daddy to help no no you got you are married when you're married you're becoming one with your spouse if you picked a man that is going to be violent towards you i hate to say it but that's on you until you decide that it's something else that needs to be done now again if you get married to a man and y'all get into an altercation where you hollering and screaming at him and he hollering and screaming at you and he accidentally or in his, his puffed upness or whatever he smacks you um are you saying that that woman should leave that man even though she was indulged as much as he was into that fight is that what you're saying oh so now she was indulged i just gave you an example a woman can cut your head off with her voice with her with her cussing you out and you know it she can cut you down make you this small a woman can do that to a man and they they do it now if that man 
lashes out because you did that as a woman. Should you, should that woman, should we go tell that woman to divorce that man? Should we do that? Is that what you're asking me? I would no. never tell a woman, huh? No, let's leave it at this. I wouldn't tell a woman. Let me get done because I don't think you understand okay. it. I would never tell a woman to divorce her husband because for one, you don't know the whole story. You never know the whole story. Now, I said I gave you two different examples. I gave you one of a man that beats a woman, a man who exercises domestic violence, meaning he was violent the whole time. And my daughter married him anyway. That was wrong from the beginning. Then I also gave you an incident where we were arguing verbally because that's what a woman shouldn't be fighting a man because they can't win. But I was verbally cutting your head off left and right. And you got so angry. You smacked me. And you saying that a woman is going to leave her husband because that happened. I guarantee you 100 percent of the women will not leave their husbands if something like that happened, because most of the time they'll take responsibility for the role they played in that scenario. That's two different men. That's two different men. Let's don't let's don't try to paint the picture of everybody being abusive. There are some people that are. Let's deal with them accordingly. But there are some people that get angry and, and they get real angry and they can't take it. Now, they're not I'm not excusing their behavior. He's definitely wrong. But I can't tell a woman to leave him because guess what? You wouldn't if a woman jumped on your back or threw a knife at you or bust out your windows in your car, hit you upside the head. You wouldn't leave her either. Hey, hey, security boss. Uh, easy, easy money. Jones said, uh, "As a man, you walk away if you can't maintain your emotion, right?" You definitely so try to. You, you definitely right. You, to. You, right. You try to walk away, mm -hmm. but 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 your honor, because this is what they do in court. I love court. Your honor, can we go back to three, uh, six weeks ago in Mississippi, where the man and his wife got into a heated argument, and he said, "Baby, I don't want to argue with you," and he walked away. And as he turned his back to go out the door, she shot him in the head twice. Guess what, black man? She didn't even got to. She didn't even got to shoot him in the head twice. We all know that when these women get mad, they are, and the man walk away. They yeah, chase your ass down. Chase them down. Chase them down. Exactly. Don't stop, stop playing. They chase them down. She and my down. sister, one of them. I ain't gonna I, say it loud. Yeah, chase them down. Exactly what up. They'll get in exactly. the car. They'll mm -hmm. ram their car. Uh, this uh, scam. You could put your hand all over your head. Maybe you haven't experienced this. Experienced this because maybe you haven't. I don't, been think, I don't think he has experienced anything. I thought maybe I so. Maybe so. But I'm telling you, women will chase a man down. I have seen it with my own eyes. They will fight him. They will. They'll try to make them fight. I have seen <laughs> men running, going into the closet, locking the closet, <laughs> hiding in the bathroom. I have seen this with my own eyes. Uh, SB, SB, I think you may have heard me on podcast right. say many times. Later that on, the worst thing great you great can do to a woman is to try to walk out. Oh, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, Nikkei. Hold on, Nikkei. I want to address that. Okay, let's see what, well, hold on, let's see what Anissa said, too. Anissa yeah. said, let's make it very clear. Uh, uh, Adisa said, let's make it very clear. SBI, I make it very clear. You better never put your hands on me. Men and women need to walk away. Listen to this, Anissa. This is what I expect for you for making that statement. I expect that you are a very mature woman as, as I am also. Yeah. If I get into a situation where it's getting elevated and very heated, we have enough sense to do that. And I definitely agree with you. But I got to tell you, and you need to be honest, not all women carry that type of wisdom or sense at 23, 24, 25 years old. Anything under 30, not all women carry that. And that's just really real. They don't. They don't. But what they do expect, though, they want to act out and they don't expect the man to lash out is what they're that's that's what they really want. Because they just want the argument and they want to. I have seen women smack a man. Come on. AL. AL is in the comment section. AL wasn't even involved in a fight. The woman smacked him. He got smacked him. Uh, I, if, I, if I can, I, again, we always. You know yeah, 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 I got it. No, no, I got you. I got you, bro. You need to be like, honest. Uh, scam, you need to be honest. If you you playing games, if you, you, you playing go. real games, real games, if he, he, he uh, knows better. Let's be, let's be this out. If you guys look, uh, I've always said it on podcast many times that men should always walk away from violence. Absolutely. I'm not saying it because I don't say those things because I haven't seen anything. I say because most of the times that violence has happened to me, a woman is always the aggressor. I don't know about that. 
hundred percent the aggressor. Is it that she slapped me on my chest or she smacked me on my head or she does something? It doesn't matter how short she is. She is reaching out for your face. <laughs> and, 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 I, I just that. can't believe it. She can I don't be four know. foot one. What? She's reaching what? out for your face. That is why I always tell men, walk away. Because if you don't walk away, she crazy. will become violent. And if you try to walk away, most of the time she will become violent. <laughs> well, let me they say this. Like people, <laughs> they don't like men walking away from them. It's going to go so, somewhere else. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Hold up a minute. We should not. We should always walk away, please. We should Listen, hey, hold on for a minute. Let's, um, let's let Ricky. Ricky, go ahead and complete your thought. Uh, like, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to address it, but I, we we didn't work there. Look, every every animal has a right to defend itself. There you go. Every single one, right? I, I ain't gonna tell you. I don't know if y'all ever heard my story, but sometimes sometimes it requires you to put your hand on a woman. Stop with this. Stop with this never stuff, y'all. That's the problem. You know this what I mean? That's what right. we live in. Right. No, no. What what I'm saying is this. Now, now let's use correct context. Now, if you just thumping upside a woman here for no apparent reason, you just jumping down and up and up on her. That's we understand that's a no go. But for y'all to sit up there and say no matter what, a woman pulling a pistol out on you, she chasing you with a knife, trying to stab you, you not to defend yourself. That y'all y'all can keep that. That's crazy. crazy. But crazy. But, but whatever. But whatever. But whatever. I'm, shoot, I'm shooting out straight up. I'm shooting out through the chest. Right, shooting, right. But whatever. Oh, my life. Whatever. Whatever. Right. What? But, but to answer to, to 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 get back on track, right. See, like I said, as black people, it's crazy that we always go to the extremes. The question was Absolutely. what? The, hold on. The question was what? Can a man that's a bad husband mm -hmm. be a good father? So again, what if what if it's not nothing crazy? What if it's not he jumping on or something? What if the woman just feel he's not an appropriate husband? What if her opinion is just that he doesn't do enough, that she looks at him a certain way, but the kids look at him another? So is it possible? Yes, within context, right? Within what's happening, we always want to jump to the extremes when, when we really, when we really being honest, just like what Bolo was talking about, just like Black Man Unfiltered, just like SBU. When we up here, most relationships don't break up or end for the extremes that y'all continually use. Exactly, bro. Oh my God, bro. Say that shit. Say it again one more time, bro. For the people in the back, they here. don't end for the extremes that y'all continually jump to. The color purple situations and exactly. all these other things is usually not that. The reason is, is exactly what Bolo said. You not happy. You not happy with me, but I'm still a great parent to my children. Right. I'm still a great husband to my children, but you're not happy with me. Exactly. I ain't going upside your head. It's you got this standard of me that you want me to meet. Right. That's this expectation that nobody the, the reason the biggest reason for divorce is uncommunicated expectations. There you go. Right. And you get you holding me to a standard or an expectation that not only can I not meet that you never told me about. Right. So can I be a good father, but be a bad husband to you? Yes, because like I said before, me being a good dude and like this, what? I know I'm a decent dude. Do I have my flaws? Yes, we all do. We're people. All yep. All We're people, do. right? But me being a good dude don't mean nothing to you if you got a standard that you haven't communicated to me. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yep. Say, it it again. It, Say that again. It, me being a good dude doesn't matter if you have a standard set for me that you never communicated to me. Right? So can it happen? Yes. Yes. The same way she could be a bad wife to me, but be a great mother to the children. Her children look at her like she's the queen mother of, of, of Israel. You know what I'm saying? She's everything. But all this time she was treating me like a, a second class citizen. Yep. Come on. Right? You're talking. So could it happen? Yes. It's all depending on what involved. We so Let's stop dropping to these extremes like. You ain't never been through it. You have like stop talking about what you're gonna do with a woman if she threatening you. Have you ever been attacked by a woman? Probably not. You see, what I'm saying, was you ever put into a life threatening situation with a woman? Probably not. Stop talking about what you would do if it ever 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 happened. Can I address something too after you finish, Ricky? Because you know, my man, um, I don't I know I'm gonna mess up your name. Uh Ikine is his name. 
Mm-hmm. You got it hundred percent correct, Ekene. You got it right. Ekene. I got it right. You <laughs> sure did. <laughs> like now it's... on future, butchers it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> forgive us, point. forgive but us. Give no us sorry, bro. SB, no SB sorry. Gets it right. As we guess it right too. I get I it right too. Okay, thank you. you. <laughs> I, I want to feel wrong. What Ricky just said. You know, a, a, a lot of the things. You know, what we continue, what we keep messing up is, we keep thinking that, um, you become a husband when you become a husband. Mm. You know. And to address something you said, you said that the women that you deal with, you know, it's they're shorter than you, they hit you. You got to start picking better women. If every woman you get hits you, what's the common denominator in that? The common denominator is you. But I think if that's every, an extreme, though, Bolo. No, no, because no, no, no. every woman you get example, ain't going to hit you. I'm going off the example he gave because he, oh, know, okay, okay. he was saying before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't like extremes. I like dealing with everyday problems because that's what we live in. You know, are there, uh, you know, it, rules, the things that break the rule? Absolutely. But that's not the everyday thing that we deal with. That's not the exception. I like dealing with the rule. The exception we can deal with later. A lot of the times we got to understand this. If I have to win in an argument, remember someone has to lose. And what does it feel like to lose? Did you really Get your point across. Did you really bring understanding? If I lose an argument, if I lose at something, I'm not a happy camper. I promise you I'm not, especially when you're dealing with emotions, you're dealing with relationships. Our job is not to win the argument. My job is to make my wife understand, not to make her lose. Same thing with my wife when she communicates with me. It's not about trying to win. And so often we get caught up in that fight where someone has to win, someone has to lose. We have to start understanding that what I tell the young men, before you go out there and try to be a husband, learn yourself. Learn what your worth is so you can demand your value. If you do not know what your worth is, then you cannot demand your value. You are going to be making mistakes. And these mistakes in this day and age are costly especially when it comes to men. It's costly. It can be your life. That's the extreme. But it can be a lot of money. That's not. That happens daily. That happens so, daily. So let me say this, because we need to understand this. Domestic violence, y'all, is, is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. So ladies, if you find yourself this, with somebody that is hitting you, and you're not married to this person, and you're not even in a a committed relationship with this person that is a bad person. So don't find yourself tying yourself with him by having a child and and needing him to be a father to your child. This is this is a bad situation. It's a bad situation. Domestic violence is a bad situation. Understand that. This is totally different than a woman and a man engaging into in an argument, and they've gotten to the point where one or the other hits him, hits each other. He may hit her. He may smack her. She may smack him or throw something at him or run behind him in the house. We see it all the time. Y'all do not play with this. This is a real issue. This stuff happens. We are seeing it more and more now. It's getting more and more violent We because people now have been weapons. It used to be just a smack here, smack there, woman or man. A man, a woman can smack a man and he used to wouldn't do anything. Now men are smacking back. We talk about this all the time. It's not a right thing. Yep. You know, like Ricky said, men should have a right to defend themselves. I don't know if I agree with that when it comes to defending yourself against a woman, because it just doesn't make us. That's, that's a lost fight. We shouldn't be fighting. We should be mature enough to walk away. I get it. But I do understand what he's saying. It's even like what Trey said today. Trey said um, in the town where he was a in a state or city where he was an actual police officer the aggressor is the person that gets arrested so there you go so you know i'm just not used to that i'm not used to a woman a man hitting a woman even in self-defense i've I'm just got to wrap my head around it but i do know that men have hit women and i do know women have hit men and i do know that women run after men sometimes when they're trying to get away so let's just be honest with that okay mm -hmm. you remember the night on my show I have a man that's on my show who has been married for three decades that said his wife chased him around the house with a fork. With the fork, yeah. Yeah. 
Right, and I agree with uh, uh, with my brother when he said every every animal has a right to defend themselves because if I'm in a house and a woman's chasing me, it doesn't have to be your spouse. It could be any woman. It could be a woman at a restaurant got mad and she passed by an empty table and pick up one of the cutting knives for a steak and come at you. She needs to be slept. There's no reason she should have an opportunity to put that knife in my chest. What and you know and you know as a man you wouldn't allow that. See that's the exactly. difference. But 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 slapping her def anyway, I'm not gonna agree with not you on slap. that. I didn't say slap, I said slipped. Oh, slip. I'm not gonna agree with you on that because I don't think men should be hitting women, even in a even in a situation where you're defending yourself. I don't agree with it, but I do know it happens, and I do know why it happens a lot of times. I can see it play out just as crystal clear. SB, SB, I got a question for you, though. Sure. If a woman slaps a man. Slap mm -hmm. him again and hit him again and hit him for the fourth time. The second and more. What should a man do that at that moment? Okay, so I'm gonna be totally honest with you. That scenario you just gave, I don't think it would ever happen. I think if a it does happen all the time, though. Wait a minute, listen, I'm I'm giving you my answer. I think if a woman slaps a man, I think that man at that moment would remove himself from that woman, is what I think. That's what I think. But if, if a if man was to stand there you remove yourself and keeps hitting you while you're trying to remove yourself, what should you do? I can't, I can't, I can't see and I can't envision what you're saying. But what I would think a man would do would be try to restrain that woman, is what I think would happen. But and I would think most I would think most men would have the ability to restrain that woman, is what that's I would what, think. But that's what Trey said. Trey said when he was out there in the streets arresting people, even if you restrain that woman, they're gonna arrest your ass. No, because no. Trey said the only now maybe he said something. Maybe we're talking about two different situations. Today he said the aggressor is the one that gets arrested. And if that ends up being the woman, then the woman would be the one that got arrested. You would not arrest the man. I don't I don't agree in a man hitting a woman. I don't think it's necessary for a man to hit a woman unless mm -hmm. that woman is overpowering that man, which I, is I just can't see that being visible. Right. And hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna call you EI since she's saying butchering your name, call you EI. Hold on, just say no, just say it can, it can, it can, last can, last can, week. Can, Huh? Okay, I got you. you got so, right. uh, <laughs> so last week on my show, we had a, a video. We played a video of a woman and a man. They went on a date. She invited a third wheel. The third wheel says, uh, she said, why you didn't pay for my girl food? He said, I'm because I didn't take her on no date. Security boss, he turned around and walked to his truck. Security boss, when I tell you this woman hit this man, with her fist and the, the, the bystanders was videoing it. She hit this man, secured the boss, and dazed him. Mm. I mean, when he walked away from her, she hit him from behind and dazed him. He hit the ground. The girl got on top of him and repeatedly punched him in the face over and over and over again. And the friend, the third wheel, came over and started stomping him in the head. So what's your what's your question though? What are my you saying? My point, my what point was I'm he supposed to do? My, no, well, well, not that. I'm just saying, when you said it earlier, you said it earlier. You said, yeah, there are women that will chase you down. That's an yeah. example of what you were saying. They'll no, chase I, you down. That man to have no idea that woman was finished put, man, she did him bad. And those people were like, just videoing it. He was just on the ground. He tried to get in his truck I and just it. fell out. I got I gotta listen, say this. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait one second. Wait one second. I listen, black man, I understand what goes on. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not saying I don't understand it. No, sometimes. no, I agree with you. When you said it earlier, I was, I was tagging on to what you said earlier. When you say it does happen, they'll chase you down. They'll chase you down. They will. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't. I don't agree with a man fighting a woman, though. I oh, always yeah. think that the man should take the higher road and try to get away from this woman. I do agree with that. But I also don't think a woman should marry a man who is a violent person. If there is domestic violence going on in a relationship prior to you marrying him, you should not marry him because we ought to already know what this is about. We should. Um, there was a comment here by TS. TS this said, is, this is color purple, man. Well, I, I think I don't know what color purple, what, what you, I don't know what you're saying, but <laughs> what I'm saying to you is this. Um, TS made a comment, not T Shaw, but TS made a comment. I may be JS. I mean, am I wrong with that? TS made a comment where he said that um, there was a situation with a, a cousin of his or something of that nature. And they broke up the fight. TS said they broke up the fight and the young lady went on and married the man whom they got her from. She went on and married him. 
And I think I want to say, did he say it was that they were deleted? I, it was a while back. Let me see. One of my family members was key deleted, y'all, getting in the middle, and she married the dude anyway. It's, this is what I'm talking about right there. This exactly. Is, this is what I'm talking about right here. Yep, yep. That's one of those situations. Uh, Dusto, I hope you're listening. This is a real situation. And it happened. And this doesn't happen several times. I have even been myself. And I've told y'all about this in the mall in a situation that was domestic. And, and the man just came in and knocked the man completely out. Y'all, it was the very craziest thing. And, and I'm like, oh, my God, Mr. Bob's like, no, you can't do anything. You can't do anything because you never know how the situation is going to go. But it happens a lot. It happens a lot. And we don't know how the situations are going to go. So um, go ahead. I got oh, let me read these, let me read these super chats really quick before you um add what you're gonna add. Let's see here. Um Clement Gray, thank you so much for your two dollars super chat. He said there there's a man on trial right now off a woman's lies. I don't know what she lied about, but on that ring cam video, she went in on his head, but he did not fight her. But she went and told somebody else to come back and get him. Y'all you know, damn if bad, you do, damn if you don't. No, it's a bad situation. It is it ain't I'm not saying it's right. I'm just telling you, I don't like the idea of a man hitting mm -hmm. a woman. <laughs> I don't. Uh, uh, D Zion, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. A uh, Zion, um, shout out SB Nation, peace and love, family. Thank you so much for your nine dollar nine nine cent super chat. And Marcus, thank you so much for your five dollars super chat. Take him to school, Ricky. Take him to school, Ricky. Ricky, Ricky has dropped. Ricky say he as an animal, we got a right to defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Uh, we stop using extremes to use. We we too stop using extreme to use to make a point. We don't exactly. need to be an extreme, but some of this stuff is not extreme. I have seen men and women fighting at the railroad track, and I'm like, stop, stop, Mister Boss. Like, gotta let it go. Gotta let it go. And y'all, soon she realized, and he stopped hitting her. She got just right and went on with him. And I was like, what? You know, so I've seen it. I've just seen it. So I don't know if that's an extreme or not. Dre, how you doing? It's good to see you. Thank you so much for your five dollars super chat. A man, husband who find out for wife. He had to have godly principles and core values that he lives by. And when we stray from the word, then boom, you're right. Thank you for that. Dre also say, SB, if you're concerned with a knife. Corner, corner. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I can't see. If you are cornered with a knife and I have been, uh oh, you have been. Wow. Then what? Um, I must defend myself. If I'm able to secure the knife, all is well. If not, all is well. Listen, Dre, again, I think as a man, you gotta you gotta restrain this woman. But like you said, what you gonna do, Dre? You gonna take the knife from her and stab her? Are you gonna take the knife from her and run away? Are you gonna get another knife and, and stab her? What you gonna do? What no, no. Do? In, that, in, uh, in that situation, you 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 pull the knife away from her, and then you have to not punch or anything like that. But there's a way to to, to wrap up around her and put her straight to sleep. Because if so you, you let you, her go, you, she's gonna grab the next weapon. Mm, okay, well then that might be what you got to do. That might be what you have to do. I don't know. I happen to think if you take the knife from her, she'll probably leave you alone. I gotta say this, right? You don't think so, black man? This. Do you really think if you a woman has a knife and she's she's after you and you and you restrain her or, or handle her rough enough to take the knife from her, she gonna continue to come at you? You think that? I, I, I wasn't gonna say a security boss, but I wish yeah. I could show you. I got stabbed right here. And tell me the situation, if you don't mind. I fought a girl's brother. She came, when I fought her brother, she came out the house while I'm walking through the neighborhood. And she come right up behind me just like this. And <laughs> with a knife like this. A little okay, so you fought knife. her brother. You fought her brother. I fought, I fought her brother and she came out, ran up behind me and hit me right here. I know, but. And, and she, and she, and she did this. I said, golly. And she came to do it again. I had to, but because if I didn't, she would have got me. She would have got me again. But you wasn't fighting her. No, I was fighting her brother. She stabbed me in my back. No, no, I I agree with what you're saying, but I'm yeah. saying, was there ever a time that you were able to turn around and fight her? Turn around and actually, no. I, I like I said, I three pieced her. I had to because she was she was about to go. She was about to come back with it again, and okay. I had to. You know what? Well, if you if you 
If you feel like you have to, then you have to. I, that's yeah. not what I'm saying. It's a little different than a, a going woman. Up and fighting her. Yeah. I feel uh, well, not if going up and fighting her. If she's talking to you, y'all arguing and going on. Right. Because it happens. And women will cut your head off with their mouth. I, I know it happens. And you smack a woman. That is a wrong act. But it happens. That I agree with you 100%. In fact, this is where I was trying to go to. That I agree with you 100%. But if a woman puts her hand on me first, oh, no, 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 no. What you no, going to do? No, no. Tell me what you going to do. Oh, hell no, nah, man. Teach her what are you going to do? You going to fight a woman? Teach her... No, why would I fight? Beat, beat somebody I'm up. I'm trying to figure out what you going to do. Beat somebody up. You got to restrain her. Definitely with my fist. no no we have to do this right this the what we this is a youtube channel we cannot be promoting violence for women and tell men to de-escalate that is very dangerous i didn't know this until i show up to this country we cannot be telling women that is okay oh if if you're beating up a man a man shouldn't do this a man shouldn't do that a man shouldn't fight back no and you can't Wait, tell her a, a lesson. But on the other she side, she will do it again until on she kills somebody. Akine, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. First of all, women are spiritual the same way men are. Women know who to do that to. Same way men that's what I'm know. They know who not to do what that I'm to. Saying, but what I'm saying to you is a woman knowing you ain't playing, my G. I did that 100% woman, correct. And you tell her she's going to go to sleep. And she know who you are as a man. She's going to put that knife down. Now, if you're dealing with a woman that's just out of order and just bugs out like that, then, you know, in that example, then you have to do what you have to do to shut that situation down. But as a man, you 100%. are supposed to be able, as a man, you're supposed to be able to kind of measure what type of action is needed to subdue this mm -hmm. situation. It doesn't just go to yep. DEFCON 8. I agree with you on that one. You dig what I'm saying? So at the same time... You know, but what I'm trying to say is that I cannot tolerate that at all, 100%. No, no, no. You know, you're know, you not beating me and uh, walking away. Oh, no, no. We're not talking about that. Oh, we're, not no. talking about, we're not talking about beating you. The same way you're saying that you can't give women the leeway to want to have violence on men is the same way you can't give men that thought process because again in this no, day no, and age no, no, a lot have that leeway. No, no, hold on let me finish what i'm saying in this day and age there are a lot of men looking for fatherly figures and unfortunately they come to youtube and sometimes fortunately they come to youtube and they look to latch on to certain men on what they say so you have to be very specific and very uh, 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 mindful of what you're saying because sometimes these guys and gals will take what you say and run a marathon with it. Uh, that's right. That's why I also want to. I, I, you see, that's why I say we have to be careful on this YouTube space. What we say, we cannot say that it's okay for a woman to beat a man and then a man relaxes and a woman stabs him and then he takes the warm knife away and then put him on a shelf and give her a pure, um, give her a Coke and Hennessy and say, just take this and see that. No. Ekene, why are you speaking does, so extreme? Why, 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 know, why are no, you I'm saying just, that? No, I'm being I know, rhetoric, but, but I'm, I know, what I'm but saying why? is this, right? I'm at, I know, but listen, why is what it is, that, why are you saying that instead of sticking to exactly what was said to make your point, why can't you just translate what was said to make your point? Meaning no one ever said that it was okay for a woman to smack a man. It's not at all ever. Okay. But you if you have to start from me saying, no, you listen, me I don't, the same I, thing, they're misinterpreting us. The people in the chat, they're misinterpreting us for real. No, they no, no, it, it, it can let me. of the women are misinterpreting us here. They no, think it, it can I'm a, I'm okay. a, I'm a, I'm Hold a, on for I'm a minute. Let me get done, and then you can yeah, say this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. All I wanted to say is this. It's not okay for a woman to smack a man. It's not okay. And it's not okay yeah. for a man to have to beat down a woman. But in the same regard, we have to have, we have to know how to control ourselves. Are you willing to just get out of control and put everything that you your life online because a woman smacked you are you willing to restrain her in some kind of way until you can get a hold of the situation it's not telling a woman it's okay it's not saying that it's not okay they know it's not okay everybody well, knows what? it's not okay um, but uh, sb look at this pre-19 before the civil rights 
issue, women knew that it was not okay to put their hands on men. Then we started having Hollywood making movies saying that it's okay for women to put hands on men. And guess what happened? 15, 20 years later, Congress then and everybody in government made it look okay to put hands on men. We have to start saying that it's not okay. You see what I'm saying? That is why it's I like not, your channel. It's not okay. It's, it's not, not okay. So we should start saying that it's not okay. Because I got to tell you, it's going to take 20 years for women to get it. That is not okay. Now, most of them think it's okay. Because hmm. it's been okay. Yes, it's not okay on YouTube space, right? But in the court of law, it's okay. Hmm. All right, go ahead, easy money. It's not okay, but I hear what you're saying. I don't believe that, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so, saying okay, so, but not okay to that. But go ahead, Black. Go so, ahead. so just really quick, Ekene, I don't I don't think that you're saying it is okay to hit a woman. I want to be very clear. I don't think that's what you're saying. Nope. But no less than four times in the last 20 minutes, you've pivoted the conversation to but if she do, I'm going to do this. And it's like, no, 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 no. We, 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 we got you. You're going to defend yourself. You don't have to mm -hmm. keep going back to that point and continuing to go back to that point. Someone may interpret that you're in a place where you're, you're like, I wish a woman would, so I can. So someone can take what you're saying, saying that you're going to defend yourself. And someone can easily extrapolate that either A, you're okay hitting women or B, you want to hit a woman. And I don't think that's what you're saying, but someone can take, someone can infer from what you're saying and how you're saying it and, and, and believe that. So I just brother to brother, just, just, we, we got you. you. We understand. All right. You, you're, you'll defend yourself. It's not okay to hit a woman. It's not okay for anybody to hit anybody. Just brother to brother, was, just, was, just be I, very I, I mindful. Read, I, read, I, read, I read your comment easy, and your comment was mostly for women. And, uh, and, and I read your comment very good, and your comment was something like, it's okay. No, it's not okay for a woman to hit a man. Whoa, where, where, where did I say that was okay? I have I, because the way you know you did you 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 inferred you didn't refer you inferred in your comments you inferred that it was okay that a man shouldn't even do anything and what I want to make clear is this no woman should put her hands on a man and no man should put her hands on nobody should start a fight but once you start a fight yep. there is a fight well, 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 well come back come back with me come back with me come back with me you had me until it's not okay for anybody to put their hands on anybody. Let's be very clear about that. Like I, I, I was under the impression that much like SB said earlier, that we're all under that same impression that it's not okay for people to hit people. It's not okay for a man to hit a woman, not okay for a woman to hit a man. Like that's that been the consistent with. refrain with, you know, with what we're saying. However, where I'm coming from when I say that under no circumstance am I hitting a woman, like you got to understand, like there's no winning in that situation. Like the second that you choose to put your hands on a woman, like you're, 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 you're punching, you're fighting. You're not winning that fight. You, you may win the physical fight, but you're not winning the fight. If you, if you, if you pick up what I'm dropping, there's no, no much, win. No there's no win no in fighting a woman. And even in, in black man's example, you know, my man got stabbed. Like, even though he hit her to get her to get him to get her off of him, he had to go to the hospital, get stitches, all that. He he didn't win in that situation. So, there. Uh, what I'm trying to get across is my that mama, there's my a, mama act a damn fool though. Ooh, my mama act a fool. I believe it, mm -hmm. as she should have. <laughs> but, but listen to this, um, Ekene, I think what's happening is this: um, when you speak on it, you speak very, very, very aggressive about it, as though um, even in the initially when we talked about is a bad husband one that will hit his wife you you didn't want to say yes you just said ah you know kind of like that and said you know yeah. and just saying There's no a lot not. To it. that's what i said i said there is a lot to it because but I, even in the remember i didn't understand i didn't i was i didn't get all the premises of your discussion before i was hit with a question so that right. is why yeah i can agree with that but the the whole thing is it's not good for anyone to hit on each other but we know things happen and the point that was we were making back then is if a man did that is he now a bad husband and i just said yeah, he is when he hit that woman <laughs> but you know and like ricky said as animals everyone 
you know, if he consider if we consider ourselves animals, an animal has the right to to defend themselves. I'm kind of stuck on that. I don't know if I consider myself an animal or not. Y'all have to help me with that one. I don't think I do. We are we are animals by nature. We are animals. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to work that out. I I don't I never figured out. We have animal animal instinct. The only difference that we we produce animals don't produce because of the way God made their hands. They have feet only, but we have hands and feet. So but who told what, you you were an animal, though? Where, where, what scripture no, biology, is that? Bio, biology, no, it's not scripture. It's biology. Biology, we are animals. You said it's we not are mammals. scripture. We are mammals. We are mammals. Just like lion is a mama, we are, a we are mammals. I know, I'm know. I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm just trying to figure out where, where is that. I'm, I'm having trouble with that. I'm going to have to do some research on that and see where oh, I am. I, am an animal. Animal. I understand yeah. exactly what y'all are saying. I just I don't know if I'm... You know, I, I happen to think we're above animals. And we're not animals; we're human. But I get, I get what you're saying. But I have to get some idea, some more idea on it. Let me do, let me do these um super chats, and then we can get back to it. Kevin King, thank you so much for how you doing, Kevin? Thank you so much for your ten dollars super chat. Um, men need to defend themselves; they do. All right, against women. Okay, I'm not saying that they don't, because so sometimes you may have to. But it all depends on how you actually decide to defend yourself. Is the issue? Can y'all hear me? I got it. It's back. Um, my brother was married to a woman. He loved more than life but we found out later she was slapping him around after he gave her a left hook <laughs> this ruined his life what it ruined his life to defend himself mm. see see we kevin we got to do something different mm. if it ruined his life to defend himself he needed to leave that woman he needed to find a way to get out that because him hitting him hitting her back didn't work it or him work. Gosh, hold on for me, black man. Keep that thought. Don't lose it. AL ten dollars super chat. Thank you. He says, um, in HS, I've seen. Is this high school? In high school, I've seen a girl who, who was probably five five in a straight up fight with a dude at least six feet. She, she ate all his punches and knocked dude out. I don't under, underestimate anyone. Ah, uh, AL, listen. Damn. I hear what you're saying. Was that Clarissa Shields? But I'm just, I hear what y'all are saying. I know that there are some women that may be challenging, but oh, I, like I told you, I told y'all, y'all myself um, a couple of weeks ago that it was a woman um, that actually challenged um, Mr. Boss. And I told y'all, I said, I told him, I said, hit her in the chest. And I was like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Let's just run away. Let's just run away. But <laughs> so Kevin, I, oh, you, know, you know what's funny? You I know what's funny? You chose what? the chest. That's what was funny. No, the reason why I chose the chest. No, I'm gonna tell you why I chose the chest. I, I <laughs> she needed to be reminded that she was a woman. She had no <laughs> business. I'm listen, I'm being sincere with y'all. Y'all can take it how you want. She had no business challenging. My husband's a big guy. Mr. Boss is 6'3, 280 pounds. She had no reason challenging this man. She was challenging him and going back and forth. And I mean, he wasn't even, he was cool trying to be cool, but she wanted to be in his face and all that stuff. And I was like hit in the chest just so she could understand that this was a man. You shouldn't be doing this. But I, you know, I hurry up and got him away from her, but it was like, she was really trying to fight him. She really was. I saw it, y'all. I mean, it was there. And I, I was like, Dak, I advised him wrong because it could have really went bad. But because you know, what was she gonna do? Yeah. Have you noticed that it's usually the small women that always want to fight? Oh, this have was not noticed? a small woman. Oh, I didn't add that part. She wasn't small. She was very sturdy and she had to be about five eight. What you say? You say about five eight? Small. No, five, five, eight, eight, five, five eight is not small for a woman, but it's small for your husband's size. Usually exactly. women well, she, want to she, always fight men way taller than them. She was wrong. She was, but we already knew that this was going to go somewhere else. But in the moment, she just wouldn't back down. And it's like, what do you do? This person's like following him around. And I'm walking up. What's wrong, babe? What's wrong? And I'm like, oh, oh, I hear. Now I'm hearing like, hey, 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 you know, push him on the elevator just to get away from this woman, you know? I, so well, I'm no, telling you, I've seen this. So woman is tasty. she's looking for a man for the night. I tell you that. <laughs> Oh, I don't it's know. But let me keep that. going here. Uh, Mr. King says, uh, Kevin says, uh, the, this woman was hitting him for a long time, fought back. She Oh, okay. This is a different one. The woman was hitting him for a long time. The one time he fought back, she called the police and his life was ruined. Uh, he could never get a job because no one wants to hire a domestic abuser. 
Wow. See, this is this is another reason why I say to men, please don't hit back, run away, go lock yourself in the bathroom, in the car, drive off, do something. Yep. If she pull a gun, run. I mean, you pull a gun. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know, black man. I don't know about a gun. You might have to try to get that away from it. Can you? You can't outrun no gun. Okay. I don't know about that. But that, um, dude, that dude in Mississippi was just man. I that was hard. I don't know. I mean, I don't have all the answers for it. you. Have to analyze the situation if it comes. I hope you never ever be in the situation. But y'all, it's got to be some time in between a gun. In an argument, it's got to be some time or some energy that y'all should be able to feel something coming up. Y'all know these women you're dealing with. Don't allow it to come up. If you're dating a woman and the third date, she pull out a gun, something wrong, (laughs) y'all. I'm just saying. (laughs) More nice. Man, that was hey, Mr. Boss. Good job. No, that was good timing. Something's wrong because y'all know that these, y'all know your woman. Yeah, I'm telling y'all, this is not a good way to go. People lose. People lose. But Marcus, thank you so much for your twin. But I just to say, but Marcus, but thank you, Marcus, for your twin dollars. Super chat. I agree that men are not supposed to fight women, but I disagree that we're supposed to defend ourselves. I, but I disagree that we're supposed to defend ourselves. Remember, the world is teaching women that they do what they want, and I also agree we should restrain women too. I think he was saying, I agree that we should defend ourselves. I think that's what he was trying to say on that. No, what he- no, real quick. No, I love that dearly beloved. No, real quick. What he's saying is, yeah, don't defend yourself, but restrain. That's why he threw that threw, threw that at the end right there where he mm-hmm. said, I agree we should we should restrain the woman. We definitely should restrain. Yeah, yeah. Restrain her. You know why? Because men, as men, we get, a man can get extremely violent, right? Yeah. We can We can get to a point where most men can get to a point where they see red. Right, and they come down off of it, and you could be looking at a body that ain't moving. You, you got to be able to control yourself. And, you and actually, me? black man, to that point, I think he was saying restrain the woman, like um, you like like grab her, hug her, right. you know, get her down so she can't, you know, to, to neutralize the the the, mm-hmm. the offender. Yeah. Exhaust her. You have to exhaust yeah. her. Um, Marcus, thank you so much for your five dollars super chases. When a man walks away from a woman that hits him. That's showing mercy. Mm, some women take advantage of that. Okay, see, yeah. Marcus, I love you for this. See, some, Ekene, you see this? It's showing the woman mercy. It's not showing the woman that she's winning. So who cares what these spaces are doing or what you feel like they're doing? It's showing that you are in control of yourself and you're showing her mercy. It's just like what black men say it. I don't know if you can feel that way about somebody you care about, but if you're so angry that you see red, you can actually hurt someone. I mean, red. for real, for real. And you can't red. get it back. Red. How long it take for you to put your hand around somebody's neck and it's over? What, seven seconds? How long, y'all? Y'all uh, know? About that time. Uh, no, it's about, I think it's one, I'm, uh, it's about, about, about that time. Uh, close to a minute. Because you got to cut off the, the, uh, depending on the pressure of the flow. I don't know how long it takes, but. goes to their brain and then their brain don't get oxygen. It takes about a minute. Oh, anyway, Lord. 30 seconds because you got to deny the brain from getting oxygen. Depending wow, on how yeah. big the person is, how strong the person is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, let's read this other super chat. We're getting ready to go on to the conversation. Marcus, thank you again for your five dollars super chat. He says both men and women should learn self control, period. Marcus, you have been a blessing tonight. I appreciate all of that. And he's right, y'all. He is right. Control. And then go back to Kevin. Kevin said simply. The man tried to one time they've been being slapped around for who knows how long. One time he tried to defend himself. She calls the police and his whole life is ruined. Now what? You know what, Kevin? Did he finally leave her or now is he having to submit to her because he can't take care of himself? I mean, is it total control now? Where are we at now? I wonder. I hope everybody's OK, but, you know, still. All right. So um, where are we at? So JG, we haven't heard from hey. you. Or right, Am I right about that? Uh, easy. Yeah, easy. You spoke. Go ahead, JG. Yeah. Um, so about 15 years ago, almost 20 years ago, I got into a situation with a woman and she chased me around the house. 
and she had a weapon in her hand. I I don't look that big, but I'm like six feet, about 220. So when I grabbed her, I grabbed her and pushed her against the wall so I could run out the house. But I didn't realize how hard I was grabbing her and I almost knocked her unconscious. Well, the police came and they saw my face was messed up. And so the guy was nice enough. This is before the body cam situation. Like five cop cars pulled up on me, guns draw. I was in a bad little town that was basically Hickville. And I was at a gas station by myself in the middle of the night. So the guy, I'm ex-military. He was ex-military. He looked at me. He said, son, your face is not telling the story that she told us. What's going on? If it was not for him saying that, I could have been dead. I could have been killed flat out because she told a story that I beat her and the child. And that's not what happened. That what happened was she tried to cut my face up with her, her nails. You could see my face. I thought I was sweating, but it was blood. You know what I mean? So my drill was pumping so hard. You know what I'm saying? So when I came back to the house with the police officer, he said, oh, yeah, she's going to jail, too. But all because he, he even told me about the uh, strangulation thing you just talked about. He mm-hmm. said if I had strangulized her and cut off her strangulation, they could have gave me 15 years off top. Just for off that. top. Mm-hmm. Off top. And that was I was not using discernment. This goes back to what Bolo TV was talking about. I was not using discernment. I didn't know how to vet. And when you don't know how to do those things, you step into situations with people that you don't know about. And you don't know what they're dealing with and you don't know who they are. And you don't know what they're capable of. Capable you don't know of. what they're capable of at all. That's the that's the it important. Could have my life. I spent a night in jail, but it was only because of God's grace and mercy. That's all it was. So you were never charged with anything. They tried to get me on some things, but because of God's grace and mercy, I was able to walk out there the next day. Okay, now that is definitely a testimony. You need to be sharing that with some people because you know even a charge will keep you from getting a job. Yeah. 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 Even yeah. a charge, you 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 will spend your rest of your life telling somebody, yeah. no, 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 it was fake, it was fake. They'd be like, yeah, you just had a good lawyer. Yeah, yeah. And I went this through that too to- with the with some job stuff as well. Like months after it happened, because it was so fresh, you know, in the system, they were like, oh, well, it looks like this and it looks like that. So we really don't believe what you're talking about. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then she tried to get back with me after the fact. Oh no, no, no. He's a good man. He's this. He's that. And it's like, no, you already tarnished my reputation. You oh, you shouldn't tarnished. even had no. Mm-mm, you shouldn't even had words. See, I was, I was in my early twenties. I didn't know anything. I didn't know how to vet. I was taught to go to church, go to work, go to school, but I wasn't taught how to deal with real life situations. I knew the word, but I didn't know how to use discernment. This wow. is what this is something I've always said. I've always said it in in this space all the time. Before you talk to a girl, before you get into any long distance, any long term relationship with any woman, vet, vet, vet. Know where yeah, she's coming from. Know her family. Know if she's raised by her dad. If she's raised by her mom, find out about her mom. Because guess what? Kids are always a, always mirror their parents. Kids always mirror their parents. And she had childhood uh, trauma. Kids mm-hmm. always mirror who raised them. If yeah. you want to know, if you tell me where a child is, I will tell you who their parents are. Yeah. Because kids mirror their parents. You always got to find out who you're dealing with. And I got to tell you, I don't last more than one week with a girl that showed me violence. The moment she showed me violence, she's gone. She got to go. I've always done that throughout my relationship. Once she showed me violence, because I don't like toxicity. I don't like it. Mm-mm. Once she showed me that, she's gone. I don't have patience for stupidity. Mm-mm. Well, well, listen, Ekene, I'm just gonna say this, but love is patience. So if you I'm sure you love your wife oh, and you have patience. No, no, for her. hell no, 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 no patient for going to jail. Hell no. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing no okay, well, listen, this is a uh, PSA to you to the public service announcement. <laughs> I think you need to gain some patience because patience is required in order to love. So I, I don't want I don't want to see you. I don't want you to be in any trouble at any given time because we're living in a difficult time right now. And you need to be able to conquer that time. 
All right. So and yourself, you got you to gotta control this thing. You got to be on the top of it. Can't ever be caught slipping. See, that's what happens. We get caught slipping. We might be having a bad day. We might be hungry. We might get tired. Somebody bothering you. And then the next thing you know, you done slapped them and you're wrong. How about that? Yeah. Easy money. Go ahead and tell me something. Can a bad husband be a good father? It is possible. Um, what is it? Actually, no, it's probable, but you no, know, is it is it probable, not possible, or possible, not probable? Hmm. We'll go we'll go with the we'll go with the second one. And the it's reason possible, that I not prob it's possible, but not probable. Because it is yes. a bad husband. Okay, I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and basically what it comes down to, a lot of what makes you a good husband also goes into making you a good father. The communication, the being there, the emotional intelligence, the availability, the problem solving. Like a lot of the things that we bring to the table that make us good fathers are very similar to the things that make you a good husband. And in the narrow example where a, a man can be a good father but not a good husband, if he did not vet properly and he's with a woman that he doesn't really like, doesn't really care for, for whatever reason, they have a child. And the report can be, hey, he was an awful husband. He did this, this and this. But he was there for his kids, never missed a visitation, took him, went, you know, took him during times where he, he didn't necessarily have to have them, gave the mom extra money on top of the child support. Like there are things that you can do where you can you know, not be a good husband, but be a good father. But most times because the skill sets are so intertwined, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not likely that that would be the case. I think you're right about that. But I think that um, the part that we missing, and I think you're, let me say this and make sure you understand. I think you're right about that. I think there's definitely things a man could do that would be maybe considered not a good husband, but he can do things to definitely um, show up as a good father. I do agree with that now understand, but I don't think we understand the strength of a nuclear family. I don't think we understand how powerful it is um, and how big of a role it actually plays in the mentality, um, in the spirit and the, um, the growth of our children. Um, because even though dad showed up and he came to visitations, he bought everything he needed to buy he took me wherever I wanted to go. We even had good conversations. Sometimes when you ask those kids, they would still say that there was something missing or they would, they would, uh, they may not say something, but in their behavior, you would see something that was missing. They may start acting out or whatever, just because they don't have that same nuclear family. I just think it's a lot of power in that, that we don't even examine. I really no, and think actually, SB, I could I could speak to that from you know just a very personal experience. So, like, my parents divorced uh, when I was about eight, eight or nine, roughly. And much like you said, there, I feel like there was a part of me growing up, like part of me blamed myself for it, even though you know at this point, being an adult, I know that it's not my fault. My parents got divorced, but then there's also that 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 fear, not necessarily fear, but like that anxiety around you know, like, do my parents still love me, even though they don't love each other? And I don't spend as much time with this parent over that parent. And, you know, that that feeling of my life would be so much better if my parents had just stuck it out and stayed together. Like there's that feeling in the back of your mind that doesn't go away until you realize that if they couldn't figure it out as husband and wife, they really weren't going to be able to give me the life that I needed to have as parents, if they couldn't figure it out to get along together, like in, now looking back on it, the best thing they ever did for me was get divorced and take the time to figure to, to work on themselves. And it's inspired me in my parenting and in my marriage to one, stick it out, work through it. We'll figure this thing out by hook or by crook. Like we're, you know, we're, we're in this for the long haul. And I can already see in my kids, like there's a certain stability in seeing me and my wife work together and raising them and being here together every day and making breakfast and sitting down for dinner. Like those are things that I didn't fully get as a child that is so valuable in the raising of my kids. And I see it every day with them. So let me ask you a question or uh, two. Um, when you put your comments in the comment sec section, are they sincere or are you trolling a little bit? 
I'll figure out a way to 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 help you differentiate. But most times, it, it, even in my trolling, I'm coming from a sincere place. Okay. I don't I don't mean to. Oh no no no! I don't want you to. I don't want you to change. I just wanted to. I just wanted to know before <laughs> I tell you my next part. <laughs> yeah yeah. So even okay. even even if it, I'm I'm being extreme to make a point, it's still coming from a sincere place. Okay. So b- with you saying that, that would almost lend to the fact that you did not have an outstanding relationship with your dad after the divorce because everything that you say is female centered as though the men are automatically going to be the reason why the breakdown is going to happen. Not not necessarily. I don't think I would attribute that specifically to him. I think. No, no, I'm talking about, no, I mean the comments you make, it, 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 it almost looks like it just looks like exactly what you said. You said that they divorced, but then later on you realize or you feel as though that was the best decision that they could have made. But right. I guess my, my I guess my follow up question should have been was how was your relationship after the divorce with your dad? Was he so there was, in your life? It was. Yeah. So he was around. It was a little rocky at times because he had issues that took him a while to get solved. Uh, from I'll say from eight to 18. We had moments. It was rocky, but that was still my dad. From 18 until he passed about four, you know, was it four or five years ago at this point? Time's moving. Um, I'm a, I was able to see my dad as a person and not just my dad. And I was able to, to come to terms with some of the flaws and some of the things that I missed uh, growing up. And at the end of the day, for me, my dad was a great dad, regardless of the divorce, regardless of the reason for the divorce and all of that. My dad was very much a father figure in my life, and he taught me a lot, whether it was the right thing to do or what not to do. But my father was very influential in my life. Yeah, because. No, go ahead. I'm I'm, going to leave it. Yeah. So so you said the reason for the divorce was what again? Tell me again. Uh, There's a lot of reasons, um, but we'll we'll just kind of say. Mostly with your dad, though, right? Yeah, mostly with my dad, yes. Okay, so and you were a child during this process, correct? So, and and this is not for you. This is a, a general statement. We have in our community we have something called the dear mama syndrome, and what the dear mama syndrome is is it's referring to the song by Tupac, dear mama, when dear mama and when he said that mama, uh, she uh, uh she was a crack fiend mama, but you always was a black queen mama, signifying that even though my mama was a crackhead she still was the best mama in the world. And I think in my, in my, I grew up cause my mama wasn't perfect. I thought my mama was God. Right. <laughs> and I grew up and I started hearing some of the stuff my mom was saying. I say, damn, I wonder what this one daddy had to put up with. Damn. My mouth is just horrible. <laughs> you know, and I told my mama this, you know, I told her this, what about a month ago I said, mama, your mouth. I said, how did daddy put up with you for 40 years? I, I just don't understand. And, you know, I told my dad, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry for, for being upset with you sometime when you and mama argued when I was a kid. But I understand. <laughs> I did. I said, Dad, I understand because my mama got a mouth on her. And I was like, mama, where did that mouth come from? Did she have it when I was 12? She had it, right? And so sometimes we put our mama on a pedestal to the point where she starts to be godlike, where nothing can happen. And when you go to therapy, the first thing they're going to say in therapy is, um, both people played a, a, a it's a both people play a part in a divorce. There's a reason that he did what he did to her, and there's a reason what what she did to him. It's, it's both people play a part, and mm-hmm. I think that's what I think we don't focus on that a lot. I don't th- I think we only focus on the perception of daddy because daddy don't have as much power as mama. And so we put mama on that pedestal. Do y'all yeah. agree? So, so let me help you with, and, and I know mm. you're, you're meaning that on a macro. Level. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But I'll even take that on a micro level. Like my mother is not a saint. Like, let's, let's be clear. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And there were things that for a long time I was resentful of because long story short, my mother worked two jobs for the majority of my childhood and, you know, by hook or by crook figured out ways to, to, to make ends meet. And so part of me was resentful because she wasn't around as much as I would I would have wanted her to be. Right. And to your point in therapy, that was something that that I did have to work through 
um, to where, you know, I was able to to accept my mother for for all her faults, just like my dad. I, I think I was able to accept my father before I was able to fully accept my mother in that way. And I think some of that was because my mother was the primary, you know, parent, even though she was, you know, working all the time. So, to, so, so, so to that point, it's interesting that, that you talk about the reasons for the divorce, because even when my father speak, spoke about, you know, why they got divorced later in life after he, you know, got himself together, he, he would say that he was the fault for it. He recognized, you know, he played a big role in it. And again, my mother was no saint. She's no angel and nobody, nobody's perfect. It takes two, you know, it, it, each person has their own, you know, part to play in the, in the delusion of a marriage. But my father made no bones about it. He was very upfront with his flaws and the, the, the cracks that it did cause in that marriage to where he got himself right, got married again and stayed with that woman for the next 20 years of his life because he had went through, held himself accountable and fixed the flaws that he needed to fix. And but but my thing is, and that's fine. I everybody admits to, you know, like I say my mom and then you say your mom did, you know, there are no angels. Yeah. But the majority of the time, the person that gets the most spotlight is daddy. Daddy want this, daddy want that, daddy, 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 daddy. Yeah. Nobody mentions mama until somebody bring it up. What what about your mama? Well you know my mom wasn't no saying either, but we can go in on daddy for five minutes. But listen to this, Dana says um I noticed y'all give more grace to men than women. Interesting. So, um, Dana, Dana, you know, you know, men ain't never been no good girl. <laughs> you know that. This is no secret. You know, men ain't ever, especially a black man, ain't never been no good. What are you talking about? Well, she said, black I noticed y'all give more. I, I, I noticed y'all give nothing more grace women, black to men. Tell her ain't nothing changed. Men ain't never been no good. Ain't Dana. been nothing. Can't win. Adam wasn't shit. Noah wasn't nothing. Moses wasn't nothing. None of them. They all can't are. win. They all bad. Well, so black man, the the, the 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 one thing that I will say there, and you know, one thing that I know that we talk about a lot is men being the leaders, men being the right. guiders, providers, mm -hmm. all of that, right? Yeah. And I think that when you are the leader, when you are the the anointed person that's supposed to lead your family forward, I think that there is a heavier burden on you as the leader mm -hmm. that if something does break down, you should you should bear the brunt of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I agree with you. I think and that's why when it comes to when women say I need my independence and I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And you can't tell me anything. Hmm. Right. I think that anything that God puts you over, you have to have authority over it. And mm -hmm. I think that and you, when you cover something insurance, when you pay your insurance, it covers the entire vehicle. Right. Uh, but then sometimes we got these liability marriages where mm -hmm. it only covers if something happens to her. <laughs> see, yeah. uh, you see what I'm saying? So we have so 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 yeah. what happens is we don't have full coverage marriages no more. It's, it's liability only only about her, right? And so so I think that's what the situation is when it comes to to marriage. Uh, we're not doing that anymore. We're, we're, it's it's just uh, y'all help me. I'm secure about you. You know. Well, no, well, I just want to say this. Well, let me say this real quick. Y'all can, can get in. But listen, I want to give grace to everybody because no one's perfect. But we got to learn. We got to learn from our dysfunction. But the fact that you would say that uh, we give me and grace is like it's like I don't know. But maybe you're very young. That could be the case because I've been here. Men ain't no good for a very long time. And I've all that's the that's one reason why I'm here, because I am around men that are good. And I've seen men operate, God-fearing men operate, good husbands, good fathers. I've seen this, I would say, my whole life. So that's th those are the ones I want to speak to. They're not perfect men, but I want to speak to them. And I want to let you all know, ladies, that there are men out there that are just like that. Not every man is trash. Now, wait a minute. Let me get this right now. Y'all, there are some that are in this space. They have fallen off the cliff. We already know it. Y'all, Some y'all. it's very true. But that doesn't apply to all men. It doesn't even apply to half of them. So the ones that want to do what they're supposed to do, they um, have morals, integrity, standards. You want to uplift that man. And you want to uplift that woman also. And you want to grace them because not all times we know everything all the time. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand what I mean by that? We live yeah. and we learn. You know, we have yeah. to go through things and we learn. Aspen, look, look at it this way. Look at it this way, eh? I want to add to this oh. point real quick. What do you want to okay. say earlier about I was raised by my grandparents 
and my grandmother was a narcissist and she was controlling and she would lie all the time. People did not want to acknowledge that she was a liar to after she passed away. I had a woman walk up to me after my grandmother passed and said, I did not know your grandmother was a liar like that. And I said, well, I tried to say that to people when I was a kid, but they said, oh, you're just a little boy. You being stubborn, you being disobedient. You know what you're talking about. But after my grandmother passed, a bunch of women came. I was like, I couldn't stand your grandmother. She was a liar. She was controlling. She was manipulating. And I'm like, wow. Like, so I wasn't the only one seeing it, but because she was the woman in the church, you see what I'm saying? They ignored a lot of her transgressions. Blinded by the veil, sir. So listen, she also says that um, I'm taking my experience and try to apply it across the board. Okay, so I I am, listen, it is getting late, but I would love for you to come up. <laughs> come up. And cam up. Guess what? I'm going to let you not even, you don't even have to cam up. I would just love to have the conversation with you because I'm not really understanding what you're saying. My my experience is that I experienced and talk to good men. It's half of these men on here I don't even know. What am I talking about? I don't know none of them. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm getting ready to qualify that, though. No, listen, I'm getting ready to qualify it. I met you, good men, on these panels, is what I'm saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> and not everybody knows everything. Right. So when you say I'm trying to apply my experience, I, um, I don't live in a bubble, but my world is not not really large either. So I'm agree with you on some things. But what are you are you saying that you have not experienced any good men? Are there no men around you that could, that you can say, okay, that's a good no teacher, no professors, no no um, good husbands, no no city workers, nobody. There's no good men in your area. That's so now, hard to believe. But now, now, this, now this is not for her. This is just a general thing my grandfather used to say bless his soul rest in peace my grandfather said when you got let me say it in the right way that that's going to be politically correct my grandfather said when you got ain't nothing kooka you attract ain't nothing nougas uh and so uh a lot of women are attracting these men and they say oh all these bad men that keep coming in my life it's something about you and something in you that are making these men get inside you listen you have to look in the mirror michael jackson said it he said this we're talking about the man or in your case the woman in the mirror you got to reflect and say why are these men attracted to me why they want me why are I always getting these men attracted to me because there's something on the inside so Come listen, on. let's say hello to uh, Anissa. Anissa, how you doing tonight, dear? Uh oh, I am love. What does that mean? Oh, I'm lovely. How are you this evening? I'm doing. Hey, Miss Glass, it's good to have you well, tonight. Always, as I always. Hope, I hope that you understood me in the comment section. It's so hard to talk to y'all when y'all be typing and I'm talking. I don't know if y'all be at the same point I'm at, or did I miss something a long time ago? I just don't know. But I hope we understand each other. Yes, so. absolutely. Okay, so uh, what would you like to add to this conversation? I know that I first want you to answer this question. Can a bad husband be a good father? That's a tricky one. Um, Wait a minute. Yes, she did, sugar bomb. She died. Hey, and look what Brown I said. Brown I said, personally, every female uh, representation in my life have been Jezebels with bad pickers who blame all the men of their terrible choices. Oh, my God. Brown eyes, I can't hide you in my house now. Be careful. Oh, my, they're coming. Here comes security. Hey, security, hold on, hold on. Don't come get them. <laughs> we just, we just, we're just kidding, y'all. Sugar Bum, I'm just kidding. It's not that she didn't lie. It's just that it's more to life than what she may know at this present time. And if you're going to call all men out and say that they're no good, then, you know, we got to fix that because that's not the case. Okay, I'm sorry, Anissa. Go ahead. You know, that's, that's kind of tricky. Um, I guess I would probably say simple answer, yes. I think it is possible. I think you have, can have a different relationship with your spouse than you have with your children. Um, so that's the only reason I would say yes to that. Um, but I did want to go back to the, I've been listening the whole time. I'm about to get ready to go to bed. That's why I'm not on camera. But I did want to call in and make a few comments. Um, I agree with you, SB, um, in going back and talking about the importance of the nuclear family. The first examples that kids see of a husband and wife is mom and dad. 
And the reason we see a lot of the problems that we're seeing um, in, in society and in these marriages is because of what people saw with mom and dad. A man's first example of how to be a man is looking at his dad. A of, of how to be a wife is looking at her mom. So we sit up here and we wonder what in the world is going on. Your first example of what that relationship is like is truly your mother and your father. And that's why people have to be so much more serious about being married and, a, and if you want to have children. Dearly beloved. So we, can, we cannot, oh, we cannot um, gloss over that. It's, it's hugely important. You know, there, there are a lot of men that you see that some of the things that, that they do and things that we've talked about being abusive to the wife or cheating on the wife. If you were to really talk to some, a lot of men, they'll tell you, that's what my daddy did. Mm. I saw my daddy do this. I saw my, oh, my uncles, my uncles. Yeah, they it's, uncles. What, mm-hmm. it's what they saw. And because you're young and you're impressionable, you think that's how men act. You think that's what you do. You think that's how you treat women. Same thing goes for women. Some of the things that they do is because that's what they saw growing up. So that's the women that they become. You are imprinting your child's mind first and foremost, above anybody else, about the type of relationship that they're going to have going forward. Um, And I don't know why people think that these kids don't know what's going on. You think these kids don't know that y'all got a jacked up relationship? Well, I didn't know for a while. Sometimes you're too young. And then when you... I'm saying when you're young, but when you you come of an age where you, you know, you have good sense, you know, children are real smart. Children are yeah, they're, smarter, they're smarter now than we were. Exactly. Yes, definitely. So if you mm-hmm. think that you're fooling these kids into thinking that your relationship is great because, oh, well, they didn't, we don't do this in front of, they, children are smart. They yeah. know what's going on. And they they're, they feel that, you know, and they see that. I, I think kids so should we, be a part. We can't, we can't um, negate the the fact of that. And there are people that say, "Oh, you got to stay together for the kids." And the kids, the whole time, might be like, "Good Lord, they need to just <laughs> they need to just go ahead and go their separate word because this is not it." And I definitely don't want a relationship like this. You'd be surprised, kids. You know, when I'm, stuff like that go on, you know what I would say though? I would tell them to work on the marriage. Because we we need to understand that there's really nothing. And y'all, I'm being, I'm going to say I'm being extreme. What are you looking for? What are, what, are, what are you looking for? I mean, you're going to trade one in to go get another one that's the same, but, you know, a different model. Well, definitely uh, you yeah. have children, you need to work on the marriage. Exactly. Because your, your children are picking up everything that you're everything. doing and they're picking up everything that you're seeing. And they're just going to go out into the world and they're going to have this, become the same men and the same women that they saw at home. And those are the same relationships that they're going to have. So I don't know why people want to sit up here and act like they don't know what's going on. This is exactly I, 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 I think I agree, I agree with you. Kids should be a part of conflict. They should be a part of parents' conflict. They should be able to see that. Because if you raise a kid up and keeping them from conflict when they got into the world, I mean, what are you expecting? I mean, kids should be a part of healthy conflict. They should see mom and daddy disagree, and they should see mom and daddy uh, get back together, bring it thing wow, back together. Yeah. They need to see both sides of that thing. And so when they get older, they know how to handle communication. See, what we're doing right now, we're suppressing our kids from what's re- what reality is. And reality is you're human. You're going to disagree sometimes. Some kids woke up, man, I was raised my whole life. I've never seen my mom and dad argue. And now those are the worst people. They don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to bring things back in. They don't know how to forgive people. They don't know how to do anything. They but, need to be a part of that. But black man, that's a tough, that's a tough conversation. I mean, I mean, how do you even begin to say, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I don't know when you start talking about family affairs per se to the children. I, yeah, I think not too extreme. Dead. Not too extreme. I'm talking about like stuff like disagreements about, you know, you start them out low. You got to start them off on the base level. Disagreements like uh, mom and dad argued about, uh, let's just say a TV, right? They okay. need to see mom and daddy disagree on that TV. 
Then I need to see mom and daddy bring that thing back in and be like, okay, baby, you was right. Or, okay, baby, okay, we'll agree to disagree. They need to see that and to be a part of healthy conflict so they can be better communicators as they get older. You know what I envision? I envision the only conversation they have is when they call all the kids together and they make them sit on the couch and they say, okay, guys, um, mom and dad are going to get a divorce. Yeah. And dad's going to live in an apartment down the street. And that that's what I envision most of the time happening. If that actually happens like that, sometimes that probably doesn't even happen. Sometimes they probably, the kids just probably see dad putting stuff in the car, leaving, you know, I want these dads to be like, I ain't going nowhere. This is my house too. We're going to work this ish out. And now the kids got to pick sides. Mm -hmm. Go in there and sit down. Go in there and sit down. And we're going to talk about it. That's what I want these men to do. I pay for this house. I am not going down the street in the apartment. We built this house. We got these kids and we're going to do what we got to do for these kids. Cause whatever, whatever, you know, and you sit there and listen and, and then she's going to be like, Ooh, uh, Ooh. I was just going to say real quick. SB, you're the first I'll, I'll make this. SB, you're the first person that ever said the same thing. I've been thinking for many, many years. I do not know why men leave their house. You're not supposed to, as long as it's not physically violent for both of you. You have to stay in that house and fix that house because this is what I do see sometimes. The reason why men leave sometimes when their wives say leave the house and then they leave, I think to him is an opportunity to get the hell out. <laughs> because no, if he doesn't want to, <laughs> if he doesn't want to get the hell out, right? He's gonna stay. He's supposed to put his foot down and get everything in that house fixed because he can fix it if he wants to. He can put his foot down. And guess what? Most women, I will tell you, most women respond positively to masculinity. Absolutely. You might not I agree with me. Yep. Yeah, because guess, women, because guess what that looks like? That looks like he wants me. He's willing to fight yeah, for it. He didn't do yeah. he didn't do this though until this night. She had to do yeah. all this to get that out of him. But yeah. you know, but uh, women though, let's let's don't be let's don't be simple minded because sometimes they be ready to get out because they got that other woman down the street, and that That's might be right. why. That's <laughs> that, might, that might be why they. If there is no second person. Already. He's not leaving. <laughs> No, he leaves not. because there is some there is somebody down the street. That's why I don't I don't know. I I hate to think that that's the case, but I want men to be like, this is our house. I'm not going nowhere. Go in there and sit down. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna work it out. If we got to get counseling, that's what we're gonna do. But I'm not going nowhere. So you just gonna have to figure it out, sister, and go in there and figure it out. But let me do the super chat, y'all. Um, Al, thank you so much for your five dollars super chat. He said the world won't say a man is good unless he's absolutely perfect in every way. If he got one flaw. People will harp on that flaw and drag them. Mm. Wow. Well, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get a different scenario. We gotta make sure y'all have any flaws. I'm just kidding. You gotta be but perfect. Anyway, That's it. You gotta be perfect. Hey. Why not? So, so ask me real quick. I'll, I'll make this one point and then I'll hop off because my, my, I gotta put my, I gotta make sure my kids actually get in bed and they don't wander around till midnight. Um, so, you know, you had mentioned that you don't know how you, you, you couldn't see how, you know, you, you would resolve like conflict within your marriage with the kids present. And it's not, you know, it, it wouldn't be a thing like you're talking about the in, like infidelity or something major like that in front of your kids. But a real life example that I had recently where, um, you know, my wife and I were, were dialoguing about something and I thought she had it. She thought I had it. And, you know, we're both upset at each other. Like, you were supposed to do this. You were supposed to. So we went back and forth for a minute. And it's like, hey, wait a second. This We're not helping each other. And this conversation happened in front of the kids. It wasn't anything, like, too bad or too out of control. And even the kids are like, oh, chill out, guys. It's okay. And we're like, you know, you guys are right. It is okay. And so here's how we're going to resolve this. And I apologize, you know, to her for, you know, getting a little upset. She apologized to me for getting upset. And we agreed on, hey you'll do this part, I'll do this part, and we'll be, you know, and we'll get it done. And so it's usually that type of stuff that the kids are seeing more than anything and not like the big, you know, like divorce or those type of conversations. I think that could happen. And that's really good that y'all showed, y'all know how to argue. And I don't think a lot of us know how to argue. So that's good to demonstrate a good way to argue to your kids. And, and but you know what, though, I want to say this real quick, because it just made me think of something. When parents argue sometimes, those kids get real fearful. So if you can keep it down to yep. a good, good communication, that would be excellent to be able to show them that disagreements can be worked out without being like Christopher says, toxic. So that's good. 
That's no, hundred percent agree, SB, because the kids, you know, like if we do end up getting into a spot where, even if we're just debating something, like you know, I'll, 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 I'll it, you know, she's a huge Michael Jackson person. I love Prince, and so like we'll get to going back and forth about Purple Rain and Thriller, and the kids would be like, "Calm down, don't get a divorce." And it's like, son, we're talking about music; it ain't that deep. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, it, it can be worked out. We just got to work at it. But listen, um, Stanley said, I think Stanley said that um, he don't, he called cap on that because it takes two people to be in a relationship. I call cap. It takes two. It takes two. One person can't make a relationship work. Let me tell you something. You can lead your relationship into the direction that you want it to go. Um, she got to tell you something, but you don't have to leave that home. If you leave, if anybody is willing to escape, if whatever we're going through is so bad, then you let the other person leave. You don't leave. Like, for instance, if Mr. Boss, Mr. Boss would say, I ain't going nowhere. And I'd be like, I ain't going nowhere. We're going we're gonna to work something out. Something's going to be worked out, y'all. We're not going to sit around here. And and if I'm a wife, guess what I'm going to do the next morning? I'm going to be mad as hell, but I'm going to be in there cooking breakfast. Babe, you okay? Yes, well, Kira, why, why is marriage like why is the trouble in marriage so severe if this man ain't whooping your ass and dragging you down the street with a four inch chain every morning i don't understand why people just can't sit their ass you know how I many marriages can be saved from a simple conversation i, I don't like the way about black man i think what happens though we don't we don't catch it at a simple conversations we let we let like five years of bad conversations yeah remember by. back in 2012 yeah. you bastard mm -hmm. You think I didn't find them panties in my car? You know that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. When, baby? 2012. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> and then by that time, it's it's that the, the trust has been um, yeah. you know, they've heard the trust is gleaming or gone. And, and it's just not it's not cool. We wait, we don't discuss things, we hide. Yeah. Baby, when yeah. you found them panties, you remember the day they announced Michael Jackson passed away. Baby, that was two oh, Lord God. But listen, let me let me say something to Anissa again. Wait a minute, was somebody else wanting to say something? Was that you, easy money? They said you wanted to. Was no, that, that, that was that was my last point. I'm gonna go okay. ahead and drop off the panel. Thank you guys right. for an, another good conversation, and y'all take it easy. Easy money. All right. My guy, appreciate you, black man. All right, brother. Yep. Oh, okay. Miss Miss Dana says, and Dana, am I saying your how do you, I want to know how am I pronouncing your name correctly? If not, please help me out. Maybe but Dana. Is, Dana. Is it Dana? Dana? If it's not Dana, it's Dana. not Dana. Dana. But I want to make sure I'm saying it right. It's Dana. Right. But anyway, um, she says some things can't be fixed. Hmm. Peace of mind Peace. is the better option sometimes. Peace of mind and a pillow by yourself in a dark house, hearing the little cracks and some, creaks. Some in the things floor. cannot be fixed. I, I might have to agree with her on that, but in not fixing them, that means nothing. That doesn't mean you can't accept them. Am I right about that, y'all? Some mm. things can't be fixed, but you can accept. Like if a oops babies come. You can't fix it because the baby here, but are you going to accept it? Mm -mm. I don't think I can upset the <laughs> Anissa. I don't think I can accept the oop mm -hmm. oops baby. I'm either. Not I think I the oops babies. I don't think well, you I know what you know what Anissa. Let me tell you something, Anissa. Let me let me put you up on game. Wait a minute, though. Let me and Anissa have. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I, wait a minute I, black I, man. <laughs> Anissa, hold on for a minute. Let me and Anissa have this moment because we are not accepting no oops, baby. No, Listen, we're not doing that. Uh, now, go, ahead. go ahead, black man. Go my, ahead. my thing. Let me say this, Anissa. Because you said. Mm, 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 mm. I'm I'm saying saying hold on, hold on. I don't know what's going on. Hold on. You know what? You know what I figured out about our women? It's on uh -uh for everything. Baby, no, that's not true. No, it's not, not, it's not, not, not all. Not, not all. I'm not going to say that. Not all, but some. It's on uh -uh for that. Mm -mm starts the problem. Here we go. Baby. Damn, you look good tonight. Let me tell you what. Mm -mm. <laughs> Black man, you silly. I know where you're going with this. I know, uh, where, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> All right, all right. So I go over there and boop, 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 boop. Oh, all right, come back. Then, oh, baby, uh, that night you wouldn't give me. I was just, I, we, we in this because you know, 70, almost 70% 70 of men are in sexless marriages. So these women ain't giving up no cat. So then he went out and got some cat and then got a woman pregnant. Then you talking about, mm -mm, I ain't accepting no baby. Well, it wouldn't have been no oops if it was some off from his wife. Look, you know, touch you your neighbor know. tonight, touch no. your neighbor and tell <laughs> your neighbor, open them legs up. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, no. 
You're not getting ready to blame your indiscretion on us. No, you did it because you wanted to. See, want to. see that's why that's why being be getting have to run around the kitchen. That's why they have to run around the kitchen. I tried to stay outside the church tonight, but let me go walk in there for a minute. And no, I'm not going to let. No, you're not even coming in the door because remember, despite what I did, you still had an indiscretion, sir. The, so you can't, the, even, the, you can't the, even get in right now. Hold on. The Bible says, "Woman, do not deprive your husband of sexual desires unless you two agree. If you don't agree, your husband should be you should be sexually active with your husband." Okay, and that's what it says. It says, it says, it says, it says, no, it does not say that. It's a it don't decide for a time in which you do agree, but he never, he never told that man that you can go out there and creep and get you another. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But what, what, what the, what the next line that said? You, guess what it made you? It made you an adulterer. You uh -huh. went out there and got another wife when you had, when you inserted and, and, yourself and, and, in that other woman. And guess what? And guess what that next line said? That next line said, right after that verse, the next line says, Wait a minute, which verse do is? not deprive your husband. Un unless you agree, and right after that, it says, time that we agree, uh, or we are, yep, both of you have to agree, right? And then after that, it agree. says, that right, it, it says, go back. It says, when you after your agreement, go back to being sexual with your husband because of temptation. Yeah, it says it right there. So he's telling yeah, the women, we, we give up the cat, or he's gonna be somewhere else in the back. No, Listen. We, but but we agree. <laughs> We agree. We agree. You fell off of your agreement. And instead of you, because guess what? All that preparation you had to do, go down the street around the corner. You were supposed to have been nudging your wife on the shoulder and saying, baby, I'm not too good with this agreement right now. Can we do something? There should have been some communication. Because wouldn't you, now did you want to do it in front of the kids or did you just want me and you to do it in the bedroom? Now, hold on. Because first of all, the, the Bible says that you, said you, that, that that you guys kids, agree. Right? He says only two agreements. Only on, her menstrual, only on her menstrual and when it's and when you guys take time out to pray. It ain't no because of the kids. I'm tired. My head hurting. I need some Advia. Oh, I had a long day at work. No, no, no. We, 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 we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. What we want to hear is, oh, give me that thing or bend that thing over. Back it up. Throw it back. Take it back down. We don't want to hear. Uh, my husband should never hear no from his wife unless a cycle on or they agree to pray together for a limited time only, like a triple walk in her again. Other than that, you got to be that way. Hold on, hold on. Black man, you knew me and you was, we was fasting. Me, we were fasting. You knew we were fasting because you've been having trouble with porn. And I, you oh, knew man. I was fasting with you. But, but you see what you did? You see what you did? You went out there and got another wife. Now you got to take care of her. You got to take care of her now. It's a, it's a shame. Are, it's a shame. It's a shame that I got to, it's a shame that I got to look at virtual ass when there's a woman sitting right Trace, next to me in the bed. Trace, That's please, all please, on you. You're not getting ready. You're not getting ready to blame that on your wife. Because most of these women don't even go to bed section. Please. They go to bed looking like they just got through morning yard. Big yeah, I know I won. I won. You don't, yeah. you don't blame that on your wife. You're going to have to repent for that, sir. And you're not you know Wait a minute. I, I got to end it right here. And you're not. You yeah, know. Well, guess what? And you're not coming in this house tonight. You go be with her. There you go. Well, you know, she might be better. You're going to find out. Go back over there. Lisa, can you do that thing you did last night that my wife said go she ahead, would never Lisa. do for me and I understood and she still won't give me mm -hmm. none? Can you do that for me tonight? They liars, bro. They liars. Go ahead. And she go, oh, my God. Okay, daddy. Yes. Listen, then I'm going to tell the kids. I'm going to tell the kids. I'm going to tell the kids. I'm gonna go tell the kids. You see, you see how the man of God do you? He knew we was fasting. <laughs> you know, Amber. You know, Amber don't care any moment she get. Oh my God! You want me to do that thing again? The thing I did with the little thing with the little thing. In the, yes, I got you, boo. Oh no problem. You are awful. At least you know I'm not playing. She know I'm not lying. You're not getting in the house. That's all I can say. Yeah, do some strange things for some change. I'm putting you out. Man, Anthony, man. he has no choice but to get out. <laughs> no choice. He got to go. <laughs> oh my God. It's been a wonderful time with you guys. Y'all know that we were just having fun. Because we'll, they'll, be, they'll be swearing out that we met oh, yeah. the type of scripture. <laughs> that is not the intentions. <laughs> oh my God. Y'all go be with Black Man tomorrow. Black Man, yes. shout out to 
Yeah, Shout tomorrow, out tomorrow night. night, tomorrow night, our mandatory vasectomies on boys and men, uh, the cure to the baby mama uh, pandemic. Let's get around. Like it's the age. They tomorrow. Let's be fair. Our vasectomies, because they got a news thing out where they're saying they're going to start accepting little boys 16 and older to get vasectomies. So our mandatory vasectomies on boys and men, the solution to the baby mama pandemic. You take up all of the floor. I'm fine with staying all right, at the edge of the door. Y'all have a good night. Thank you, Black Man. Good to have you back. Yes, ma'am. Anissa, Anissa, have a good night. We'll see you soon. Peace to everyone else. Y'all been outstanding tonight. We'll see you soon. Bye. You screaming, stay. Don't think it's in me to listen to flow. It's so different with distance. We roam into zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door. But instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though you're screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts ain't too scared to usher off. Sorry, Ma, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Think about what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take a to my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars We were poets at sunset It's funny how love can fall out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist the spliff and laugh and relax Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reasons So I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't say No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.